Begin to thank the Lord wherever you are. Thank Him for the gift of life. God bless you, woman of God. Can you? God bless you, Sibo. Reba Shehakate Mazukana Maye Bragadash. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the adoration. Mazubra Ekan Talabadado Shakate. Radabo Sukatana Mayekete. Randa Kushke Ekan Talabadado Shakata. Rabaraba Sukana Maye Bragado Zededu Jagada. Jehovah, we thank you for the gift of life. Lord, I thank you for my life. I thank you for the lives of your children who are here listening today. Lord, it is not by our power, it is not by our strength that we are here in the land of the living. Lord, it is by your grace and mercy. Jehovah, we say thank you. Mazukate, mazukaya bragadon zehata. Mashakata ya bragadon sha. Redabo sukate, makana yekate. Remana shakaya bragadash. Rebebebe sekate mazubra ekana maye bragadash. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the honor. Randa kushke ekata la bragadosha. Thank you for the lives of our loved ones, our family members. Thank you for the lives of our children. Jehovah, we say, be thou exalted. Randa kushke. Lord, thank you for your protection, Lord. Lord, thank you for good health. Remana shakate. Mazubra ekata la bragadosha. Thank you for protection. Thank you for provision. Rekanta la bragadosha. Rebana masubra ekana yebete. Mazukate mazuza. Ekana ye bragadosha. Remana zekete mazubra ekanta la bragadosha. Lord, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. We want to say thank you, Father. We just want to say thank you, Jesus. Mazea kana maye bragadasha. Rele bo sukata ya bragadasha. Thank you, Jesus. Mazea kate mazu brahata ya bragadasha. Rele bo sukata maye kete. Masha kaya bragado ze gadu jagada. Makanta la bragado ze hata. Mandika maye kete. Mazekate mazukaya bahata, reda bo shakate mazekate, makuya rebenda na bo subra kekate, mashakata ye bagado zekadu jagada. Lord, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, we thank you Jehovah, we thank you Jehovah. Mazekate mazubra anta kushke ya bagadash. Lord, even as we are about to hear your word today, as the children are gathered today to hear, Lord, bring the ones who are supposed to be here today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that somebody will be blessed, that somebody will come to know you and the power of your salvation in the name of Jesus. Lord, I cover the process with the blood of Jesus. I cover every one of us with the blood of the Lamb. Lord, even as people are here, Lord, may they be blessed and may they find answers, every answer that they have been seeking. Lord, speak through me. It is no longer me who is here, Jehovah. It is you who is seated here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. I hope I'm not hope it's not too loud. Hope you can hear me. If you can hear me, please say. You can hear me. Comment. You can hear me. God bless everyone for joining. God bless you, Janice. God bless you, Tengeni. David. God bless you, Jamie. Joseph. God bless you, Siro. God bless you, Jenna. God bless everyone. If it's too loud, please let me know. If it's too loud, if it's too loud, let me know. I'm not sure if it's too loud or if my voice is loud enough. But let me know if it's too loud. Hallelujah. God bless everyone for joining. God bless you. How are you all doing? How are you doing? Where are you watching from? How are you doing and where are you watching from? God bless you all. Continue to share and invite your friends and your loved ones. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, it's fine. Okay, God bless you. All right, good. Because I'm not sure if it's still loud or not. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. How is everyone doing? How are you all doing today? St. Lucia in the house. Yeah, Shanila, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Masha Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, woman of God, Claudia. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Elion. God bless everyone. God bless you. God bless you. Janet from Manchester, UK. God bless you. God bless you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and all the honor. Sima says, from you, Jenny, U.S., God bless you, Sima. God bless you, Claudia, Jamaica. God bless everyone. God bless you all for joining. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad to know that you are all doing well. Hallelujah. I haven't been here for one week, but if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> watching from Namibia, God bless you, man of God, Tengeni, baby, God bless you. Angela, best man, says Italy, God bless you. God bless everyone for joining. Thank you for joining. Continue to share and invite your loved ones to be blessed. Hallelujah. I haven't been online for one week. One week and I think one week and one day. I'm saying eight days. You all know why. <laughs> you all know why I haven't been you know, online. We've been on a three days fast, and normally I come on Fridays. Hallelujah. But I had to make it up. I said, no, I'm going to come today, which is Monday, and I'm going to share God's word. And it's interesting how God has been ministering to me, even during the fast and all this while. And, you know, like I always say, whatever I come to pour out to you guys, whatever I come to, you know, preach, you know, that God is leading in my heart to preach to you guys, um, I also reflect my life to it first. You know, before God sends you out to, you know, to tell someone something, God wants you to also examine yourself before you bring out that kind of, you know, whatever it is that he's sending you to do. So definitely for me, you know, when God gives me a word, I always reflect on my own life with that word first before I say, okay, let me like preach the word to other people. Hallelujah. And it's amazing how some conversations can bring you know, can, can, you know, bring what God is saying. And I was having a conversation with one of my sisters in Christ. And um, it's amazing how God brought exactly what I'm about to preach today. Hallelujah. And I have, we, we, me personally, I had to reflect on my life. And God says, said, go and preach about, go and preach about it. And he gave me more, you know, more like um understanding hallelujah god bless you pastor rose god bless you for joining god bless you give me more understanding but the topic of today is serve god while you still can serve god while you're still strong serve god while you still have the strength to do that hallelujah i'm sure some of you here are above 40 and i believe some people here are above 40 years and uh, the strength you had when you were 20 years old and when you're 40 is completely different, right? Who is above 40 here? Raise your hand. <laughs> I know some people don't like to talk about their age, you know, <laughs> but it's okay. If you don't want to talk about your age, it's fine. It's completely okay. But I believe some people are above 40 here and you can tell that what you are, what you were able to do when you were 20 or 19 or or, or, you know, or in your early 30s, you're not able to do it anymore that you're, now that you're 40, or maybe you can do it, but you, you don't have the strength to do it like the way you used to do it before. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> Candy says, not your child. <laughs> Jenna says, me, God bless you. Claudia says, me, God bless you. Hallelujah. No, I'm actually saying it. I'm not saying it just because you're both 40. I myself, I'm saying it because I'm also in my, you know, in my mid-30s, and there are things that, I cannot do that I used to do when I was in my 20s, you know? And I'm like, oh my God. And sometimes in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, you're getting old, you know? <laughs> you know, I just say like, oh my God, you know, you're getting old. Of course I'm not old, but you know, your body feels it. Okay, your body feels it that you're getting old. Hallelujah. Meta says 44, wow. Wow. God bless all of you. God bless you. God says I'm both 40. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. So, if you have your Bible, we're going to open our Bible to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Ecclesiastes. I don't know why I cannot pronounce this. Ecclesiastes. God bless you. So, let me use my, my, my phone. Today, I'm not using my Bible because apparently, God bless you, <clears throat> woman of God, Bendu. Apparently, before I came, I was trying to run from the baby so they don't see me like coming downstairs. I forgot to bring my Bible from my room. So I have to use my phone today. God bless you. So, you know. so we're going to read Ecclesiastes chapter 12. If you have your Bible, please, I would like someone to help me post the NLT translation. 
<laughs> yeah, you know this Bible, man, Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. So I don't, I don't need to bite my tongue. <laughs> so we're gonna read Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter twelve. Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. I'm gonna read the NLT translation. So we're gonna read. Somebody should help me post. We're gonna read from verse one to seven. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 1 to 7 we're going to read. If you can post it, please help me do that. So it says, Don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your creator. Honor him in your youth before you grow old and say life is not pleasant anymore. Hallelujah. Don't let the excitement of your youth cause you to forget your creator. You know, when we were young, you know, like, I'm still young, please. <laughs> when we were much younger, you know, you know, like I always say, youthful example, sometimes because you're so young, you're active, you are, you want to explore, you want to see life, you want to, you, you, you meet different kinds of people, you, you mingle with different kinds of friends. You tend to forget God because you feel you're having so much fun doing other things than pleasing God. Because you're strong, you can go to anywhere you want to go, you can go to any party, you can do anything you want to do when you are, you, when you are a, a, a young person. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about when you're sick. I'm just talking about when you are, God bless you, church. I'm just talking about when you are young, you're able to do a lot of things. Hallelujah. And most time, many of you here, you can testify to that. Many of you here, when you were much younger, you didn't pay so much attention to God. You were just doing, I mean, some people will say, I, I, well, I did, but, but we can actually count how many people really were serving God from, from their, you know, young age to when they were probably like much older. Many of us started well, and then we started doing our own things. A lot of us here were doing our own things. Some didn't even serve God at all, you know, because when you are young, too many things occupy your mind. And what are the things? The things of the world, your flesh is taking too much of your time and control of you. For example, when you have friends, what, what are your friends really thinking about? Your friends are thinking of partying, your friends are thinking about boyfriend, girlfriend, your friends are thinking of gossip, your friends are thinking of maybe traveling, your friends are thinking of just the things that, that will bring you fun without adding God or Jesus to it. Some of you then, if you pray, you just say, uh, Father, thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Even some, when you eat, you know, some people, I don't know if some of you still do it. The food would already be in your mouth. Thank you, Father, for doing that. Just, just, you don't have, you're always in a hurry. When it comes to things of God, you're in a hurry. You're not patient. You don't have time for God. You just have time for yourself. You just have time for, you know, to make up, to paint your nails, to wear short skirt, to do all this youthful stuff. You know, you didn't have time. Hallelujah. He says, don't let the excitement of youth cause you to forget your creator. Because when you are young, there's so much excitement. You are very hyper. As a lot of you here were very hyper when you were young. I'm pretty sure you're very hyper. You want to be uh, anywhere that is happening. You want to be there. You want to know the latest news. Your friends, you have friends that when they call you, they call you to tell you the latest gist of somebody that maybe you don't like. What is going on in their life? Or maybe you have friends that just give you the latest news of what's happening in town. Hallelujah. But you, you, you probably will not, many of you here will not say you really had friends who you were doing Bible study with over the phone or who you were really like committed when it comes to the things of God. Not so many people will say, yes, I did that. Not so many people will say, I did that. A lot of you were living just anyhow. We're just, you're just living in the world without adding God or you, you know God existed. You know about Jesus, but you didn't have any relationship with him. You didn't have any relationship with him because you allowed the excitement of your youth to make to what to make you forget your creator. Hallelujah. Then he says, honor him in your youth before you grow old and say life is not pleasant anymore. Remember him before the light of the sun, moon, and star is dim to your old eyes. When you start getting old, you are not seeing anymore. You don't see clearly anymore. Even some of you are not even old. You're already wearing glasses because your eyes are beginning to like, you know, shut down. So imagine when you're getting older, you're not able to see properly. So everything, when you're old, everything begins to change in your body. Hallelujah. He says, and rain, clouds continually darkens your sky. Remember him before your legs, the gods of your house. 
start to tremble and before your shoulders the strong men stoop remember him before your teeth your few remaining servants stop grinding and before your eyes and before your eyes the women looking through the windows see dimly remember him before the door to your life's opportunity is closed and the sound of what fades now you rise at the first chipping of the birds but then all their sounds will grow faint remember him before you become fearful of falling and worry about danger in the street before your head turns white like an almond tree in bloom and you drag along with energy like a dying grasshopper and the crap and the copper berry no longer inspires sexual desire remember him before you you near the grave your everlasting home when the mourners will weep at your funeral yes remember your creator now while you are young before the silver cord of life snaps and the golden bow is broken don't wait until the water jar is smashed at the spring and the pulley is broken at the well for then the dust will return to the earth and the spirit will return to god who gave it hallelujah i read ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 1 to 7 hallelujah it's just you know have you ever thought why didn't i serve god when i was much younger for some of you who just started knowing god recently have, have you ever like has it ever come occur to you like why didn't i serve god when i was much younger why didn't i serve god when you know in my youth i could have done more i could have done that although the bible says you should not worry about whatever that has happened in the past let it be there it's foolish to you know bring back what happened in the past you know to the present but i know some of you in your flesh have worried like father why did i save you when i was like in my teenage years why did i save you when i was 20 years why did i save you when i was 15 17 when i you know i could have done more hallelujah because many of us could have done more many of us could have done more it doesn't mean that god is not going to do a lot in our lives but you know, when you when you think back and see how many years you wasted before you came to Christ, especially for the ones who are already like advanced, maybe you're already in your forties, in your fifties, before you came to know God, you feel like what the what what a waste! I wasted so many years before I knew Christ. Like your body, your your your, your bones are weak. When you are young, for example, you are able to do a lot of things. You are able to fast because you're young, you're strong, you're able to endure. When you are when you are young, you're able to travel to anywhere you want. When God tells you pack your bag, move, you move. I'm not saying that when you're old, God cannot tell you that. But the only difference is when you are young, you're very active. Hallelujah. You can do what you want. You can go where God wants you to go. You can decide if God tells you go to a remote area, stay there for one year and pick the gospel to a particular community. There are things you can do so quick, 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 quick for God because you're not thinking about anybody except God hallelujah but when you are old your body is weak if god tells you okay go to jamaica and run you know have a revival you're already thinking about the long flight okay maybe sitting down might be a problem some might already start having back pain or back problems or knee problems some have arthritis even maybe when they are 40 some people already have arthritis on their knees and you know you cannot sit long you have to do this you know like your your body is weak your body is not the same like when you're young and active you're not patient enough to sit at an airport and just be waiting for your flight or sit for 10, 20, or 15 hours just to go to a particular country. You're not able to do these things so well. For example, when you are young and you're doing the things of God, you're not forgetting your creator. When God tells you move, you move. But now, take for instance me. I have a family. Before I'll be able to go to a country to preach, I need to settle my house, meaning my husband has to be aware, you know my children has to be well to be well taken care of you know i have to make sure everything is in order at home before i move you understand and you know it's, it's not the same when you travel alone and when you travel with kids when i was much younger even when i didn't know god it was so easy i could be here for example somebody will call me my friend will call me and say what's up let's go to so -so 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 state or so -so 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 place I could just pack up my bags and go because I, I didn't have any baggage to you know go along with me I didn't care I was not hearing anything from God I didn't care if God was saying go or don't go I was pleasing my flesh because I just wanted to have fun 
Hallelujah. I was just doing my own thing. But now with kids, God will not just, if God tells me, for example, go to a place to preach, God is going to give me a timing. Maybe you can say, I want you to go to this country in one month. And that one month, he's giving me time to sort my house. Hallelujah. Sort your house. Make sure things are being taken care of before you go. You cannot just take your bag and just move. And you don't know if your kids are fine, your husband is fine or nothing. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. But when you are alone, you're able to do much more. You're able to do a lot of things. Hallelujah. Look at Apostle Paul. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in Second Corinthians or so, he talked about when you're single, you're able to do a lot for God. When you're a single person, you're able to... He wasn't saying that people shouldn't get married. He, he, didn't, he didn't discriminate marriage. He only said, if, if, you, if you would ask for his advice, if you can stay single, stay single. Because when you are single, you are able to carry out the work of God you know, with ease, without disturbance, without, um, um, without distraction, without sharing you know, time with family and God. You're focused. You're doing what God wants you to do. But when you are married... You have divided attention, meaning you're going to serve God. But at the same time, you know you have also a family to take care of. So your attention is divided. Hallelujah. But he didn't say people shouldn't get married. He just said if you would ask him, if you would ask for his opinion, and you can hold yourself, meaning you will not let your flesh tempt you to fornication or adultery or whatsoever, he would advise that you stay single. He stayed single because he was able to carry out that, that um, mission. He was focused to carry out the mission just to serve God and God alone. Hallelujah. To serve God and God, I'm sorry, I'm, sometimes I get this, um, I get this, uh, what do you call them? So I have to, sorry. You know? So when you are young, you're able to do so much for God. Don't wait until your bones are paining you, you're weak before you start, you know, because there's a difference if you're, okay, now look at your, some of you are still like in your 40s, you're still able to do, um, you're still able to do seven days fast. When you get to your 50s and your 60s, your system might not be able to tolerate this kind of fact. That's why when you're young, God allows you to do the very hard things. When you're young, God allows you to carry out some very strong, you know, kind of assignment. Because when he knows your body becomes weak, those days that you're able to do those hard things will cover up for your weak days. Hallelujah. It will cover up for your weak days. But if you're already, for example, 60 years your system might not be too good for the seven days dry fast because physically you are tired, you're weak. So you might not be able to do those kind of very hard fastings. You might be able to do, of course, your three days, your, you know, six to six or whatever, but those very hard ones, 10 days, 15 days you used to do when you're young, your body will probably not be able to carry out that, you know, that kind of assignment. Hallelujah. So serve God in your youth. Serve God while you still can. Some of you here, you have assignments from God. God has told you, go out and preach. God has told you, go and do this. You're still waiting. And I don't know why you are waiting. Do you want to wait until you're 50 years? Do you want to wait until you're 60 years? Is that when you want to start carrying out, carrying out your assignment when you don't have time? Some of you are not married now. God is training you. God has told you, go out there, begin to win souls for me. And you're still waiting. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for when you're now married and you have divided attention? Your husband wants attention. Your children want attention. How are you going to not carry out that? Don't think that it's only interesting for you to come listen to somebody else and be blessed. Somebody also wants to listen to you and be blessed. Their souls attached to you. Their souls attached to whatever that, you, that God has placed inside of you. There are people connected the people's destinies are connected to yours. Once you begin to delay what God is telling you to do, it's a problem. It's a problem. If God is telling you, go and preach, go and worship, go and sing, go and do evangelism, go and do whatsoever, now that you still can, now that you're still young, please go and do it. Time waits for no man. Time waits for no man. Don't wait until you're tired and grumpy and you can't do nothing. Then you start giving excuses. Oh, Lord, I'm too old. Oh, Lord, my teeth is off. Oh, Lord, my this is that. Now that your teeth is still looking nice, you still have that beautiful smile. Now that you still have strength in you, now that you can still dance very well, now that you can still jump up, do that job that God is telling you to do. 
Because some of you enjoy to sit down hear other people that you're blessed, like, oh, oh my God, I was so blessed. Yes, I also want to hear some of you and say, oh my God, I was so blessed. Some people also want to hear from you and say, oh my God, woman of God, we're so blessed. Because God has put so much in many of us. There's so many things inside of, of, of many of us that are still dormant because you're not using it. It's inside of you. There's nothing like, I cannot do it. There's nothing like, I cannot do it. There's like, oh, uh, 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 God, I'm too young to do it. Oh, God, I'm too old. Oh, God, my, my, I cannot see well. Oh, God, I cannot read. Before God called you to do that job, he knew that you could not read. Before God called you to that job, he knew that, 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 that you had something that you were not confident about. He doesn't care about this thing. He doesn't care. He knows. Open your Bible to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7. Let's read it. Je Jeremiah wanted to lament as well because he, he, he didn't want to carry out his assignment as a prophet. You know, he wanted to say, oh Lord, I'm too, I'm too young, I cannot do this. No, God is not looking for excuses. God doesn't like those things. And he said, Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 7, he says, okay, let me read the, the, the six, chapter 6. He says, oh sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. This is somebody who is already running away from his assignment because when God calls you, God expects you to, you know, say yes. But this someone already ran away from his assignment. He was already running like, uh -uh, I'm too young. Let, I'm too young. How am I probably, okay, let's say he was 12. I'm too young. How am I supposed to go and preach? It's not possible. And then God tells him in, in seven, he says, the Lord replied, don't say I'm too young. For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. Some of you, God, you know where God has sent you. You know what God has told you. But you are still, I don't know why you're storing that information. People need to hear what God has told you to release. But you're keeping it as if you're building up a library. You're keeping it as if you're trying to write a book. Release the word that God has stored inside of you. Release it so that he can give you more content. If you don't offload what God has put inside of you, how do you want to be empty and for him to refill you? You can't be stuck. Let me tell you, every day, every day that is new, every day that comes, God puts something new inside of you. There's a new word inside of you. There's something to say to someone about Jesus. So if you're storing up all the ones that have been given, you're not releasing, you're not giving to anybody, how do you want him to fill you up and put more inside of you for you to release to people? It's not possible. It's not. Some of you have the gift of healing. God has told you, go and pray for people. Fear not go green you. You're so fearful. I don't know what will happen. What if I pray and nothing happens? It is not your business if something happens or not. The most important thing is God says, go lay hands, pray. You have prayed. Whether the eye open, whether the person walk, walk out, that one is no longer your problem. You have done the job. I always say something. There was something I learned from Pastor Isaac. There is what you call, he, he taught us one time, he said, there's what you call instant healing and there's progressive healing. Sometimes you pray for somebody, okay, for example, you can pray for a blind man and his eyes will open immediately. To God be the glory. Sometimes you can pray for someone and they will not see immediately, but they might tell you, I'm able to see some, you know, shadows and all that. And maybe by the time they go to the house and sleep, that's when their eyes, and they wake up in the morning, that's when their eyes will completely open, meaning it was a progressive healing. It was not an instant miracle or instant healing. So it's not about you doing the miracle. No, just do what God has told you to do. Let him be glorified. Some people are too afraid. Oh, because you want it to be, everything has to be perfect. If I pray for this person, God, their eyes must open. They must, they must be healed. So if, if they don't get healed, healed, you feel disappointed. Then you don't want to pray for people when God tells you go and pray for people. That's not your job to 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 you know to to want to know whether the person will be completely okay. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, we want to be able to pray for people and we see a results because you you don't want to feel ashamed. You don't want to feel you know like you failed. You know, and I know God is a God of of God is not a God that wants to shame you or disgrace you. No. But one thing, that's why whenever somebody comes to testify and says, woman of God or man of God, you prayed for me, something happened. You did this, something happened. You give God back the glory to God. It's not about you. It only encourages you. You only feel like, wow, thank you, Father, that you found me worthy to use to pray for somebody and they got healed. But the glory goes back to what to, goes back to your Father. Stop storing up things that God has put inside of you and you're waiting and waiting. Some of you. God has told you to do things two, three, four years ago, not even today. Years ago. Until today, you, are, you have still not done it. 
What do you think you're doing to yourself? Why do you think you're not confident enough to save God? Let me tell you, if God has called you to do something, he will help you. He says in his word that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Have you realized that sometimes even this Bible that we read, if you want to read from Genesis to Revelation, you will still not know many uh, um, um, scriptures by, by, by heart. You might know how to quote it, but you don't know where it is exactly in the Bible, but you know that it's in the Bible, you read it. But sometimes even as you're talking about the scripture, the Holy Spirit will not give you where it is in the Bible. But you know that you don't remember where it is in the Bible because he will help you. He says, I will help you. And then maybe he will say, oh, it's in Jeremiah chapter this. And maybe you're still, you're like, when you get it, you're like, let me check if it's true. And you check it like, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. It's really true. It's in this particular place. He will help you. You're not walking alone. When God sends you out there to do his work, you're not walking alone. You're not walking alone. You have backup. So I don't know why some people are afraid to do God's work. I don't know why some people are afraid to do what God is telling them to do. If some of you, you have made other people's destinies to be delayed by not doing what God has told you to do. And that is a very dangerous thing to do. Don't wait until you are you are old and tired. Don't wait until, you know, don't, don't stop giving excuses. Stop it. Me particularly, I'm very, you know, I'm very open. I, 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 I'm very outspoken. I know how to talk, you know. And I'm easy going, you know. But when God told me, when God told me that I was called and when God told me for the first time to start preaching on Facebook, I was afraid. I was not afraid, you know, of, of going to do God's work. I was just afraid because I've never been on a camera just telling people God's word. So I just felt like, you know, you know, it's like when you're standing in front of a church and you hold the microphone and you're preaching and all these eyes are looking at you. Although, yeah. I'm just here alone. But you know, you feel that people are watching you when you're talking. So we're just like, Father, I need the confidence to be able to like do this, you know? Because something you have never done before is strange. Hallelujah. It's very strange. But when God tells you to go, do you think he's telling you to go just for people to come and see your fine face or to come and look at the set of things you have or to come and look at whether you put makeup or not? God is sending you there and he's backing you up for you to know the right things to say at the right time. And for people to, you know, be touched and come to know Christ. You're not coming to do God's work to come and speak big, big grammar. No. You're not coming to do God's work for people to, for people to see the kind of clothes you're wearing, the kind of makeup you put, how beautiful you are. That's not why God sent you out there. God sent you out there to give his word. When you give his word, you go back and he refuse you. Because you have pulled up what he has put already inside of you. And I began to ask God, I said, Father, it's really true. Yes, I know you don't like when we ask, why didn't we do this one with this? God doesn't like when we do in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, if I'm not mistaken, or 10. He said, it's foolish for you to ask this question. Why didn't this happen before, before now? Those are foolish kind of questions you don't ask. But sometimes you ask, God, why did I have to wait till now that I have children and I have a family to do it? Because I feel sometimes limited to do some things. That sometimes I'm hearing something, God is telling me something. And I want to give it hot, hot, the way I'm hearing it. But I can't because I have a noisy house. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have a noisy house. And I can't. So the only thing I can do is just write it down what I'm hearing study the word of God about what I'm hearing, and then, you know, God will, you know, give me more um, revelation about what he has told me. But, you know, sometimes it's so, you know, there's a way God will drop something in your spirit. It's so hard. You just want to release it and let it out. But you can't because you're limited. There's some people that are alone. When God gives them a message by 2 a.m., they stand up, they come on Facebook, they say that as, as it is. Some people, when God gives them any time, any day, because they're alone, they're able to go live any time. Nobody will come and be knocking on their door. Nobody will come and be asking for breakfast. Nobody will come and... I'm not saying it's not beautiful for you to have a family and do God's work. Don't get me wrong, no. But I'm just saying, if you know that you are in this category and God has sent you out there to do something and you're still hoping maybe for a husband or you're still hoping for something, but right now you still know that you're still very much single. God has put so much... Please start it. I'm telling you, if you are convinced that it was God or it is God who is telling you to do something and you haven't done it, please start doing it. Because trust me, family takes a lot of your time. Family takes a lot of your time. Children take a lot of your time. Family takes a lot of your time. I'm telling you, some of you here are parents. 
Some of you here are parents and you, you have your husband, your wife, your, your children. They take a lot of your time. So if you know that you don't have any of these things, please make sure you make good use of your time right now. Now that you're still very much waiting. Father, give me my destiny spouse. Give me my husband. Give me my wife. Give me my this. Take this time to be... Maybe it's when you come on life and you start fishing. That's when your husband or your wife will see you. You're still hiding. You don't know. You're still hiding. So maybe it is when you begin to do God's work, bam, the God's work will attract the husband. From You just see your husband will start, you know, relating with you because you went out there doing God's work and God blessed you with what he had already promised you. Stop waiting for, for an approval. Stop waiting for somebody to, to tell you, hey, go and do it. If you know you heard, see, I believe, see, God talks to all of us. Don't think that God only talks to servants of God. God only talks to a specific kind of people. That's not true. God speaks to everyone. You just have to, you know, put your ears down and have a listening ear. God speaks to everybody. Some of you have assignments that you have not done. Assignments that have piled for, for months, for years. I don't know who you're waiting. I don't know who you're waiting for to come and carry out that assignment for you. I don't know. Yes, I'm telling you. Love at first and yeah, it's true. It's true. Many of you are carrying so many, so much inside of you. And you're not releasing it. Some either fear, some either you're not sure. You know, sometimes you say, something told me. <laughs> and most of that's something that told you is the Holy Spirit, you know. Something told me to do, but I was not sure. So I just had to like, wait, you know. Stop wasting and sitting on people's destiny. Because trust me, some of you here, are, are, you carry anointing for crowd. Meaning you carry anointing that would, that would pack stadium. So imagine if you're not doing God's work now. Imagine a whole stadium. You know how many people that, 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 that come to a stadium? Imagine all these lives attached to you, just waiting for you to start. But because you haven't started, they're all still doing their own thing. Everybody just doing their stuff. They're all living their lives. Because you haven't started to do your work. I want many of you today, when, when you're praying in your free time, ask God, what is that assignment that you want me to do? What is it exactly? I don't want to sit on all these things that you're giving me, all the gifts, all the anointing. I don't want to sit on it. It's not for you to sit on it. Not be, not be cheer. It's not for you to sit on it. It's for you to, to use it. I'm not saying it's easy. If I tell you it's easy, I'll be lying. Because even myself, before I had the courage to pray for people, I was also a little bit like, hmm. <laughs> God, with this thing, <laughs> God bless you, woman of God, Christian Mary. God bless you, woman of God. I was like, God, with this thing work? Ah, God. God is not waiting for you to ask him whether it work or not. If God is telling go and pray for this person, he just wants you to be obedient. Go and pray for the person. That's all that matters. Go and pray. Don't wait. On. Another, another reason why some people are also ashamed to go and pray for people is also because you are not confident in what you carry. That's another thing. One. Two. Some of you, you don't want to pray for people because there are not many. If there are many now, you okay, maybe God is using me because there are so many. But as long as there are one, it's a little bit discouraged. How can I just pray for one person? Me, I want to pray for 10 people. First start with the one person God has given you to pray for. Because when you pray for one person, the confidence starts, starts to build up. But then the person comes to you and says, Woman of God, you prayed for me and I was healed. It boosts your confidence. Like, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. So now when two people come, you know that God who did the first one will do the second one. Thank you, Jesus. Then three, then four, then five. Because God knows you're able to handle now more people. But don't be waiting when God has given you one assignment. You're waiting for 100 assignments before you start doing it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. When God was ministering to me about this, God said so many people are just sitting down on their gifts. You sit down on your gift. You sit down on your anointing. Some of you are the kind of power you carry. You don't even know what you have inside of you. But because you're not confident, you only feel, oh, it's only woman of God you know, that has power to pay. Not lie. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? You, you will lay hands on the sick. They will get healed. They will be recovered. You will cast out devils. The blind eyes will see you have this power in you, but you're sitting on it, waiting for who? I don't know. I don't know. Serve God while you still can. Serve God in your youth. Serve God while you still have strength to do it. Serve God. Stop waiting and saying, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next year. See, every day, 
that you wake up, you're closer to your grave. If you don't know it, better know it. There's nothing like, okay, well, next year, I'm, I'm, okay, some of you now, maybe this year you clock 30. Next year you clock 31. Next, another year like that, 32. See, every, forget even every year, every day you wake up, you're, you're one head, you're one head, you know, you're one head ahead of your, 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 your death. And many people have died with so many gifts. Because what? They didn't know what to do with it. Because there's a saying in Africa, I mean, some of you are African, they say, um, they say, ground, they chop better food. You know, I know it's pidgin English, but um, it, mean, it just means that the, that the ground eats good food, meaning what the ground has swallowed is unbelievable. The ground has swallowed gifts, anointing, riches, all kinds of things you can think of, this ground has swallowed them. Meaning when people die, when they don't fulfill their destiny, when people die, the, the earth has taken that one. Hallelujah. He said, very true, I was told by God to start to do his work yesterday. You see, this is Janet saying this because God made it clear for me to talk about this. You know, sometimes people don't like to hear this type of preaching. They just want to, you know, hear the ones that are so good, that sound so good. And it's sad because... In the last days, a lot of people have itching ears. They just want to hear what is good, what sounds good, what is funny, what is whatever. But they don't want to hear about the truth of why you are created. God bless you, man of God, wicked. See, we all have a reason why we were born and we came to this world. And it will be sad for you to be born, come to this world, and not fulfill your destiny. It will be really sad. Because where will God bring you to this earth? You clock one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe some of you, we don't know if Jesus tarries. Some people might reach 100 years. Some people might not reach. But you know, you have reached a certain, you know, God God is helping you. You're you are growing every day. You reach 40, you reach 50, you reach 60. And you still don't know what to do with yourself. You don't know why God created you in this world. You haven't asked him to tell you, why am I here? Like, what is my job exactly here? Help me, give me direction. And you're still waiting. It's, it's a pity, really. It's sad. That's why when I see young people die, I don't, I don't feel bad because they died. My first question is always, Father, did they, first of all, did they make heaven? And second of all, did they fulfill their destiny? Because, you know, if you notice these days, a lot of young people are dying. Old people that are no longer dying. You see people that are 100 years, they are still enjoying living, living long. Now, check social media. You see, 17, 21. 25 people that have never seen life dying. If it's not accident, it should be this. It should be. So many atrocities happening now in the last days. A lot of young people are dying. But I always say one thing. Me, I don't care if I die tomorrow. My own is father. Am I pleasing you? Am I doing my assignment why I came to this earth? Am I doing my, my assignment well? That is what is important. Because if you die fulfilling your destiny or you have fulfilled your destiny, to die is gain because you know that, okay, see Jesus, Jesus lived only 33 years. Jesus was not an old man. <laughs> he, he was very young when he died, but he came to fulfill his destiny, which he did. Are you fulfilling yours? God bless you, man of God, Obina. Are you fulfilling your destiny? You think you came to this world to come and eat beans or come and eat bread or come and drink your God or come and chop cake? Or come on, I don't know, drive fancy cars. You think that's what God created you in this life? My sister, if you don't know where you came, go and ask him again. Help me, Father, why did I come here? Oh, you think you came to this world to come and give that to five, five children? Marry five man with muscle, good looking guy that you can show up. That's not why you came to this world, my dear. Ask God, why did I come to this world? Why did I come to this world? Even in, in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 3, the, the word of God says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. It means... When you follow what God has brought you to this world to do, if you now want five honky guy, he will go, go give you. If you want five hundred children, he dash you. If you want a certain kind of, you know, God knows what we like and he knows, of course, I don't want my children to suffer. I want them to enjoy. But at least he knows you are doing it and you are what aligning with his word. You're not just doing things in your own flesh. Because that's why you see some people, they ask and miss. You're just asking God for things that don't make sense. But you don't want to work for him. You don't want to serve him. But you want him to do everything for you. You didn't come to this world just to come and look at people's face and come and look who is fine, who is not fine, who is good, who is not good, who is rich, who is not rich. You came for a purpose. You came for a purpose. Before you were formed, he knew you. He ordained you. 
as a prophetess, as a man of God, as an evangelist, as a kingdom financier, as a whatever. He ordained you. He knew you before you were formed. Hallelujah. So why are you here? Ask God, why am I here? Direct me on the right path. Why am I here? Why did you create me? What is my purpose on this earth? See, social media is so... It's, it's amazing what social media is doing today. This is the same social media that I'm using to preach the word of God. This is the same social media those days used to come and just see what is happening. How, what's going on? What's, you know, you come and gossip or you come and see what is happening. Maybe like just to know what is happening in people's lives. You know, scroll, laugh, all those things. Like you do stupid jobless things on social media. Useless things that don't make sense. But today, this is the same social media that God is bringing out, you know, people to preach his word, bringing out, you know, his sheep, saying, go out. It's like, this social media is not like a field. Don't think a field is only when you are in a particular church, in a country, in a city. That is not. Social media, God has made it now possible for him to send out his sheep in this field. This is the field here, social media. Go and preach my word. Some of you, you have 5,000 friends. I don't even know how people have 5,000 friends on social media, but some of you have 5,000 friends. How are you encouraging your 5,000 friends? If you have 5,000 friends, you're preaching, and they don't, they're not supporting or encouraging you, my sister, start to delete. Me, my deleting button is on point. Yes, I deleted like 50 people. It's not like, I'm not deleting you because I don't like you, no. I'm deleting you because you don't like what you're seeing, like, because... You won't tell me you're not seeing that I'm preaching God's word. It just means you're not, you're not, you're not interested to know about Jesus. You don't like what you what you're hearing or what you're seeing. So I don't want to have ghost mode people on my platform. I don't want to have lukuluku people that will come and lukuluku and go no. If you're not useful on my platform, I tell people to if I'm not useful on your platform, please delete me. If I don't comment on your pictures, I don't like, I don't do nothing, I'm not encouraging you. Please kindly take me up because either I'm too busy, I don't see it. But if you just feel that I'm not useful to you, take me out. Don't have friends because you want people to see you have 5,000 friends. 5,000 friends that, 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 that don't know Jesus. 5,000 friends that don't even support what God is doing in your life. It doesn't make any sense. Remove them. Remove me. I've removed, I've removed almost 200 people. Because for me, I, how can I come and share God's word? People don't come to encourage you and say, wow. Thank you and get blessed. But once you snap picture of yourself standing posing or picture of vacation, hey, they will come and like and say, oh my God, you're so fine. Oh, your family is so beautiful. But when you're coming to talk about Jesus, nobody wants to hear that. No, darling, it doesn't work like that. Take them out. Pray and ask God to bring new people. Bring people that want to know you. I always say, Father, bring the right people to me. I don't want just, even my cousins, I took them out. So this is not just about, oh, I'm just trying to be partial because they're just, no, even some of the people that I remember, I don't know them. They send you a friend request, you accept, but you don't know them, but you know that you've never seen this face on, on any of your platform. They're not doing anything. I take you out because I don't know, why are you there? Are you there just to occupy my space? Are you there to come and do look, look? You want to come and look at my face? Why? Go and look for people you want to look at their face, not me. So make space for new people to come and want to know about Jesus. Ask God, help me bring people that want to come and know you. They want to know who you are. They want to, you know, they want to have an encounter with you. They want to have a relationship with you. We are all here for a reason. You came to this earth for a reason. And it will be sad for you to be here and not fulfill your destiny. It will be sad. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 says it. Don't allow your youthful self to don't be carried away by the things of the flesh because when you're young you know you're carried away by the things of your flesh you're a little bit everywhere you know that you forget your creator many of you back then you know they won't pray me particularly i was not praying those days if i even pray it means huh, holy spirit touch me i go to when i go go i go to club enjoy myself do all my stuff when i come back i come and sleep so whether queen of the coast kissed me in the club, I don't know. Whether devil romanced me, I don't know. But Asha slept. You wake up, but God was still protecting you. But you're not doing his work. So why not do his work now? Why not do his work now? Have you ever asked yourself, you know, how many times you could have died when you were in the world? Many of us could have gone since like that. Sleep and you will not wake up. 
But God kept you. Sometimes I've sat down and asked myself, all these people that I've met in the club all my life, I'm very sure that I've danced with Satan before. I'm, ve I'm very confident of it, maybe. That I must have danced with, you know, devil will not come with horn and come and visit you and say, oh, I'm devil. He will come like a handsome gentleman. He'll be like, child, for you people that like fine, fine men, be careful. You like fine, honky, strong man. Say, child, see, fine guy. Be careful. <laughs> All of you that like fine, fine people, your eyes always bulging as when you see fine boy. Your eye will be, <laughs> your eye will be shining like touch. <laughs> I'm very sure one of those fine guys those days would have come. Hello, sexy. You know how they do it in the club. You'll be dancing. You'll be feeling, <laughs> you'll be feeling yourself, <laughs> fooling around, shaking your, your your behind, acting. You know. You don't understand now, devil, they follow dance. I don't be a king of the sea or queen of the coast for the guys. I don't know, man. <laughs> you see a fine girl in the club, be like, man, see this fine girl. You don't understand now, mommy, what time you follow dance. <laughs> but then you carry and go to your house, you talk to fish. You say, try. <laughs> Even if you don't talk to fish, say, you have slept with queen of the coast, you know? You don't know. You don't know. Or maybe you even, even follow the person, but eventually nothing happened maybe that person was supposed to initiate you maybe it was truly king of the sea that was supposed to initiate you after that sex but for some reason god just made it possible that nothing happened maybe you slept off but you don't sleep for queen of the coast and be king of the sea bed now nicola Muni said i was almost killed doing wrongs but god protected me you see he said queen queen frog and fish <laughs> I'm telling you, really, I'm telling you. People, you know, sometimes it's good to reflect on your life. Like, think of where you're coming from. Don't think because, oh, because, uh, yeah, thank God for God's grace and goodness and mercy, we didn't die. But just imagine all the people that your mouth has kissed in this life. You know whether there's one that you kiss that is a spirit? You don't know, man. <laughs> Do you know? Is you know when God started revealing to you, be like Jesus is Lord. So I've kissed spirits. So I kissed a so I kissed a frog. Hey, Vanza, will you know? Because you're doing the things of the flesh. When your flesh starts to function, you're not even thinking about. You know, Jesus said the purpose of to think of the spirits. You're just working in the flesh. You're just doing your thing. You're not even. If God is even telling you, don't do it. Don't go. Your flesh is, you know, your flesh is too, the willingness of your flesh is too strong that you, you are not, you are too deaf. You cannot hear God. It's not possible. It's not. But did God create you? Did you come to this world to be doing all these things? No, that's not why God created you. But, well, that's why, you know, God is merciful. All these things that happen in our life is for a reason. God will allow you to go through the process so that tomorrow when you start telling people your story, and they see how far you have come. They, they will thank God for you. Actually, the ones that know you, they will thank God for you. Don't think you came to this world to come and just eat and drink and marry and be like, man, life is too good. Make I enjoy a bed. Nobody make you Jesus. No. Yes, maybe you kill Jesus. But at the same time, while you are enjoying what God has blessed you with, focus on the work God has brought you to this earth to do. There's nothing like I'm too young. There's, there's nothing like I cannot speak well. There's nothing like I did not go to school. There's nothing like I don't know if I can do it. There's nothing like that. God bless you, comfort. God bless you, in you. There's nothing like that. See, some people are preaching in their native languages and they're doing it well, and people are watching and people are getting blessed. I'm telling you, they're getting blessed. So don't don't look for an excuse. You know to suppress what god is telling you because you don't want to do the work you feel is a body you feel oh i'm not and uh, this one is not right you know father i don't know how to do it i'm too fat let me lose weight oh i'm too just stop while you're doing the job you'll be losing the weight don't worry just start with the job first hallelujah just start with the job first even even as believers some some of you here so many so much content inside of you it's like there's a book inside of you Come now, release it. Just be talking the book. Maybe, maybe people, let them be getting blessed. You will not agree. You will close your mouth. I don't know. I don't know if it's time, but God has told you it's time. I don't know how many confirmations some of you need before you know that you're supposed to go out there and preach. I don't know how many confirmations some of you need before you know you're supposed to go out there and do evangelism and win souls for God. I don't know how many confirmations some people want before they do the right thing. 
Some God has told you, you have dreamt it not once, not twice. Maybe a prophetess has told you, you are still saying, I want more confirmation. Which confirmation you want again? What else are you waiting for? What else are you waiting for? Go out there and do what God is telling you to do. Stop waiting to listen to other people and say, Man of God, I was blessed. Thank you for your word. Me, I want to listen to your own and come and say, Me, I was blessed. Oh, you know how to be blessed with only what I'm saying, but you don't want me to be blessed with what is inside of you, your own content. Come release whatever God is telling you to release. Don't be afraid or don't be shy or anything. If you want confidence, ask God, Father, give me the confidence to be able to do it. Before you know, you do it one time, two times, you see the confidence will even, you will even come, you will even know people are watching you. You just be doing it effortlessly because now you've built it. Hallelujah. You built it. So please stop keeping suppressing. And again, it's not only when you come on Facebook to pray, that's only when you feel that God is in you. Some of you, just in your communities where you live around, your next door neighbor, God is saying, Go and tell this person about Jesus. And another reason why some people are afraid to talk to their neighbors about that because most of you here, some of you here, you're not friendly. You see your neighbor, you fuck your face. Good morning. Of course, if you're not friendly, how you want to tell them about Jesus? I go answer. You're not going to because you're not friendly now. You always go one direction. When I smile at you, you don't smile back. So you feel, mm, you know. But if you are this friendly, a little bit open, you smile with your neighbor. All those, all those little, little smiles open door for one day, maybe a conversation. Before you know, they'll just stop by. Hello, what do you do? Well, you know, where are you from? You go enter a house. Another day again, go see, hi. Before you know, one day she will stand with you for like 30 to one hour just talking. Before you know, what do you do? Oh, I'm a preacher. Oh, really? You're a preacher? Before you know, before you, know you drop Jesus, dash them. Whether she agreed that day or not, at least you have sowed the seed first. It's inside our mind now that this woman preaches about Jesus. So she will always remember it. And she told me about Jesus. Some people might become a little bit curious. They, want to, they, they, they don't know anything about Jesus so much. They want to start reading the Bible. Check. What is this? Who is Jesus? What, what is all these things? Curiosity will make them start believing. Curiosity. Although they say curiosity killed the cat. It's not everything you have to be curious. There's some things you just let go. Don't go and be curious and enter into trouble. But if it's about Jesus, please be curious. I'll, I'll be happy for that kind of curiosity. If it has to do with my father, please be curious. Come and check, read, Google, anything you want to do, do. Let him visit you. Hallelujah. Let him visit you. I'm going to go make it as a child. May God help me on that because when God gives me a message for someone, that is, a, that is a woman of God. I fear giving them the message. Let me tell you, that's another thing that people have to... <clears throat> I think I preached this thing last week, if I'm not mistaken. When God tells you to do something, just do it. It doesn't matter what God is sending you to tell the person. And I prayed the last time that there's a problem with we believers. And I'm going, to, I'm going to say it because I'm going to say it starting with school of power. People should not think because you are an ordained prophetess, prophet, pastor, evangelist, whatever, then you feel that when an ordinary person from the ministry, because I believe none of us are ordinary, maybe Probably God has not yet, you know, put the person out there to start the ministry or maybe they are still, you know, under training and they come to you and give you a message. And because it's not coming from somebody you respect, you ignore it or you look at the message a certain way. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry for you. When somebody brings a message to you, it doesn't matter if they preach, it doesn't matter if they don't preach. Once they give you a message, Common sense will tell you, tell them, thank you so much. God bless you. Now, you now go to God and say, Father, did you send her really to me? Is this message mine? See, we all, we all hear from God. <laughs> There's a way you want an answer. You will bother God. He will give you that answer. It could be that he might not tell you yes. Maybe you're on Facebook scrolling. You get your answer. Somebody posted something and it's what you just said. It's just the dream or the message or whatever. You're like, mm, Okay. You go to Instagram, somebody said exactly what she just sent you. Your confirmations are there. What else do you want? If it's a bad dream, you reject it. If it's a bad information, say, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. That one is not for me. You tell the person it's not yours because it's, a, it's not a good stuff. You reject it. It's not yours. But don't wait until it's a woman of God that you feel that is respected before you, 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 you believe in what they say. So it's the same thing. When God gives you a message to a woman of God, whether you are doing mighty things or you're not, 
go and give the message. It's not your business how they take it. That one is no longer your business. Because trust me, if you don't give that message, God will deal with you by not even giving you messages anymore. You will be praying in your altar. Father gave me a message. Father sent me a God block is there. God will say, No, the one I gave you, you didn't do it. So don't come and ask me for any other assignment. The only thing I ask God is, Father, give me the wisdom on the right way to put the word. Because you know, sometimes there's a difference when you get the word, and there's another difference when you have wisdom to translate the word. Meaning, if God is telling you, for example, maybe God shows you a dream about somebody, and God shows you a dream about where they were fornicating or doing something immoral, and God says, tell her. Talk to her about it. The person, the person obviously knows that they were committing fornication or adultery. And God showed it to you in the dream to warn them. God doesn't expect you because you have wisdom. Hello, you know? God will not expect you to be the judge and go and say, um, I had a dream that you were fornicating. You had better stop it. It's not God will punish you. You know, some people, some people are like that. Some people are like that with me. When they give you a message, they give you a message as if they are God. They want to talk to assistant Holy Spirit. So they want to be the one to, to give you the judgment before God gives you the judgment. And that is totally wrong. You come to somebody, you give them a message that is not, you know, maybe it's a, of course, the spirit they are struggling with. And for God to have given you the message to give to them because God loves them enough for them to know that, hey, I love you enough for you to stop doing this or repent or else you can go and get a disease, you can die, something can happen to you because God loves all of us. So it's, a, it's for you to use your common sense that God has given you to be able to pass the message out, you know, in the right way. You just say, blessings to you. I had a dream like this, like this, but you know, I had a dream about this. I believe God wants you to repent from it. You know, I know it's a spirit. We all struggle with different things. You know, there's a way you put it. You're telling them what is what the dream is about, but at the same time, you are making them know that God loves you enough to want you to change from it and to deliver you. They will accept it. They'll be like, Thank you so much, woman of God. It's true. Thank you. What you said is true. You cannot go to somebody's inbox because you feel that you God showed you something very, very bad about them. You now come and say, you're an agent, you're a fornicator. God said you should better repent or you die. You know, some people are really that mean. They actually, if they don't like you, ah, you don't know. They will now use it as if, because you're passing out the message from God, they turn to assistant, uh, they become the assistant uh, judgment person or whatever. They come and judge you. They come and write you in a very mean way. The, 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 the message is not coming from a place of love or from a place of, of, you know, I want you to repent from this thing because God wants you to really repent. God loves you enough for you to repent. They come and tell you as if they, if they had a knife, they will cut off your head for doing what you did. Hello, before you, be, you started working for God, you probably was worse than that person. Maybe you slept with all your neighbor's husbands. Maybe you slept with all the people in your community. Maybe you did all the bad, bad, nasty things. But because God, you are privileged for God to show you that one. You now want to come and turn to, uh, 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 you want to come and turn to George, George and Julie. Come and help God judge the matter. Don't do that. Thank you, Deputy Jesus. Wisdom is needed. That's why God that gives wisdom, he said it in James. Ask, he will give you generously. Meaning, the wisdom is enough to share to everybody. Just come and ask me. I am God, Abi. Just ask me. I need this wisdom. It will give you for free. Some people don't have it. Some people don't have it because they just feel, anyhow, the message comes, why? You just send it out like that to people. It's wrong. It's wrong. So if God is telling you to give somebody a message, don't say because she's a woman of God or because she's not a woman of God, you will not give the message. Give the message. See, let me tell you something. The spirit of God is not the spirit that causes confusion or causes a, a problem. When God gives you a message and you know it's from God to someone, trust me, when you release that message to them, there will be, there will be a, 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 an agreement in their spirit. They will know God sent you. Even if they don't know, you give them the message, they receive it. They say, Father, are you the one? Will God now tell them, no, I'm not the one? God, God doesn't join heads together. God doesn't bring confusion. God doesn't cause problem. So definitely, you have released the most important thing. You are the messenger. You have released the word. So you release the word, you get out. It's not your business what they do with the word or not. Whether they believe it or not, it's not longer your problem. <laughs> it's just like prophecy. There's some people that they will prophesy to you. Be like, oh, Father, yeah, this is the right prophecy. Somebody else will bring a prophecy to you because of you. They are not prophesying on, on Facebook. They are not yet, you know. You'll be like, are you sure is really professor? Busy from their mind. 
Who told you that even somebody who is prophesied accurately, who told you that they cannot also probably use their mind to prophesy to you? That's why we have to be careful. See, these things with this this work with God is very, very sensitive. Let's stop doing um how would they feel? How would they not feel? I used to think like that too in the past. I would say, how would this person feel if I bring this kind of message? How would they? it's no longer your problem? God has given you the message, give it to the owner. It's not yours. You are a messenger. Give the owner the message. The only thing you say, God help me, so that I will know how exactly to put the words, the right words out there to the person. That is what is important. It's not important whether they receive it or not, whether they, because if they don't agree, the same message he gave you, he will still give it to somebody else to go and give it to them. If they don't feel agree, he will now show it to them in the dream. They'll be like, oh, oh, two people already came to tell me this. Oh my God, Father, I'm sorry that I didn't obey. And once you start thinking that nobody's big enough, I'm talking about false prophets and false children that are coming everywhere to write nonsense in people's inbox. When you know that God sent somebody to you to give you a message, stop being nasty. Stop feeling like God cannot speak to any other person except from the faces that you know. God can speak to you from somebody on Facebook that might just be a friend, but maybe the person is not doing ministry work but they are born again. They come and give you a word. Stop feeling that you are too anointed. You are the only one that hears from God. Stop feeling Stop feeling. Feeling like, you know, nobody can tell you anything about God except a particular person. That is the spirit of pride. And trust me, the way you will go down, you will not even expect to go down like that. Because if, 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 if you are not able to hear, okay, you, you, you don't want to hear somebody's own, but you want somebody to hear yours. You're very selfish. <laughs> you want to be able to release what to people and they will clap for you and say, oh, thank you, woman of God. But you don't want to hear someone else's own. It's stupidity, sorry. If you don't want to hear other people's own, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't accept people to, to hear what you have to say as well. So stop holding people's messages. When, when God gives you a message to give to someone and you know in your spirit that it's God who has given you this message, it is not your problem what the person does with the message. Give the message and leave it like that. So, woman of God, we get. I hope I have answered. I have answered your question or or your statement or how, however I put it. Because stop feeling. See, let me tell you one thing. There's nothing like I'm too small. My anointing is not big enough than this. See, when God gives you an anointing, it doesn't matter whether you feel too small or too big. He has given you the anointing. Hallelujah. He has given it to you. So stop feeling. Oh, my anointing is too small. Maybe they will not. Uh, they will not respect me. No lie. I say it and I will say it again. When God calls you, it doesn't matter if you want them. Be the biggest thief of before. Be the biggest assassin of before. Be the most dirtiest prostitute of the past. When God calls you, he will put respect to your name. I will say it anywhere. When God calls you to do his work, he will put respect to your name. That is the God that I know. So stop thinking of, oh my anointing is too this, this, this pastor is too... Pastor, this pastor open blind eyes. Me, I'm never praying for blind eyes to open. This pastor does this. How can I go and relieve this message? My dear, God can use anybody to give you a message. Look, see, Balaam, he was in a donkey. Imagine, a donkey that spoke, that gave him a message. A donkey, an animal, not be human, be animal, that gave him a word. God can use anybody. God can use your children to, to tell you, to give you a message. God can use anybody to give you a message. So don't feel, I'm too anointed, I'm too this. Nobody can tell me anything except the woman of God, the Puleza, or woman of God, the Winkage. They're the only ones that I know that, that are preaching. And let me, it's only them. Any other person that comes to give me a word, I will not answer. That's the spirit of pride. That's the spirit of pride. And I'm saying it because even in school of power, a lot of people are doing these things. There was a time I preached, I said, there's something I noticed in School of Power, which is very annoying and very, very, very bad. You will not add somebody as your friend because you just like to add them as your friend. But once woman of God brings them up on the platform and says, God says you're a prophetess, God says you are this, and blesses them and put them up, your friend request will be like 50, you'll be, you'll be wanting what happened now? Why do I have so many people from School of Power? And that's why when I see such kind of requests, I do not accept it. 
because I call it hypocrisy. Send me a request because you like me. Send me a request because you want to be my friend. Send me a request because you just want to, you know, I just want to be her friend. It doesn't hurt. I will be much more happier like that because I'm okay, this person is just my friend from School of Power. You know, you, you never know when we're going to meet each other. You never know when we're going to meet, meet each other. Hallelujah. But don't send me a request because you have been announced on the platform. So now you want to come and send me a request to see, okay, let's see now if she's going to perform like mommy or if she has the anointing, if she can prophesy to us, if she has the power. That is hypocrisy. Don't do that. If you send me a request, I will not answer you. Sorry. You will be there till Jesus comes. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's very wrong. I, I preached this thing, I think, two months ago. I said it. It's very, very wrong. Don't do that. If you're not friends with them, don't be friends with them. Don't add them. Except God is leading you to send a request because maybe there's a prayer point that you, God, gave you to give them to pray for you. It's different. But don't send friend request just because somebody has been announced. It's hypocrisy. You don't do that. If you're not my friend, if they want, let them announce you in the plan. I'm not going to add you because I will admire you from far. I'm happy for you. But I won't play like a stupid person and just come and hey, you go and send a request. Why? A lot of them, a lot are doing it and it's wrong. It's a wrong move. It's not good. Are people because you like them? Are people because you want to know them? Are people because you want to chat with them? Before you came to Christ, all the friends that you added, before you knew God, you said being God's work on Facebook, people that you don't even know where they are from, they just send you requests. Sometimes you don't feel like maybe you see the person's face. Oh, like, let me just add this person. And from there, you guys start chatting. You get to know them. They did not see you spending money or sharing money before they came to add. They just saw your picture. They said, okay, let me just add this person because I just like her face or I just like what I'm seeing on Facebook. That's why they added you. But don't, don't add somebody. Don't make somebody your friend, you know, having a wrong motive. Your motive is to come and see if, you know, God is using them if God will use them powerfully, if they can prophesy to you powerfully, if they can tell you your problem, or you know, you want to come and do luku luku, let me come and look. Mm, is she really going to do well? Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's bad. It's wrong. And that's why I had so many friend requests when mine happened, and I didn't add people. I said, no, you stay there. No, no, no. I don't want that. You stay where you are. God bless you. I love you from far, but I don't want this. And I noticed that they do it also to also other people. Stop putting for, for, if you like somebody on Facebook, one of your sisters, me, there's some of you that I see, I don't even know, I just admire, I'm like, man, this is our sister, fine, oh, man. Oh, I see fine sister. Even on, even when on the platform, they might not even be my friend. One of God is saying something about them. I will just comment, I just love her. I don't know, I just love the person, but she's not my friend. You don't have to be my Facebook friend first before I love you or before I show you that I care about you as a sister in Christ. People have to stop doing this. It's hypocrisy. It's not nice. It's not good. Honestly, if you know you do it, stop it. It's not. It's not right. Except the person sent you a request. Okay, you can add them, but don't be the one jumping. Go well, and send them job because they have been announced. It's not good. It's like eye service. It's like you are making friends with somebody because they have money. Okay, she's rich. Let me just associate. But when the money is no longer there, you run. Or maybe you were not their friend when they didn't have money. Now you heard they have money. You now want to be their friend to rub shoulder with them because if you or oh, they are rich, rich, I want to associate with rich people. It's crazy. It's, it's wrong. And that thing can annoy me. I don't like it. I know me. I always say it as it is. I don't like those things. I don't. If, if I have four friends on Facebook just for, I'm good. At least let the four be genuine. I might not be chatting you up every day. I might not really know you. But I might just admire what you do. I'll just be like, Father, thank you for, for this one. Thank you for, you know, for strengthening her. Thank you. There's some people that I don't watch, but me, I pray for them. I don't, but I don't watch them. But when I see them pop up, I'm like, wow. Father, me, I'm seeing how hard this work is. This work hard, though. Father, help all of us. There's no easy strengthen them. I tell you, when I see maybe the ones fasting seven days, you know, and they're coming online, I'm like, Father, strengthen them. It's not easy. But when I go and say, oh, you know, hey, I was praying for you because I saw you fasting. No, I'm not a hypocrite. I will not come and tell you that. I just pray for you in my closet because I'm led to pray for you. I don't need to announce or show you that I'm doing it. No. No. He so said, during the three days fasting, God spoke through my mouth during the prayer in tongues. God said a lot of people are <coughs> fasting to show off. 
and God says he sees everything and everyone's hand. Exactly. If you are fasting, if you are fasting to show up, you are just doing a weight loss training and hunger strike. Sorry for you. <laughs> if you are if you are fasting for sure, if you are doing yourself, because me personally, uh, I might not like to eat it, but I like my coffee. <laughs> I like my early morning coffees just to enjoy my nice coffee and relax. I like them, um, and they tell you. So if you are fasting for sure, if you are doing yourself, but that part because you 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 are expectant, and it's funny because. Truly, it's true that when we fast, we are expectant. We want something from God. But sometimes to learn to fast just to... You see, this fasting, we had three days. Um, we had three days. That, what, well, let's say it ended yesterday. Okay, three, three days fast we had. To be honest, I didn't ask God for anything. That is the truth. I said, Father, I don't want to ask you for anything. Me, I've asked you for plenty of things. I've asked you for things. I don't want to ask you. If you want to give me anything, give me. But me... I will just pray, praise you. I will just be happy, celebrate, sing praises to you, pray in tongues, but I'm not asking you for one thing. And I didn't ask God for one thing. But I know I received so much. So don't always go on a fast job because you want to, Father, give me, Father, give me, God, Father, give me money, Father, give me help, Father, 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 give me, which day will you actually just say, Father, thank you. Thank you for bringing me this far. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for my family. Thank when. <laughs> One of the players said, the way I like food, eh? <laughs> the way I like food. <laughs> you know, me, I'm not I'm not a I'm not a big food eater, but I love my coffee. So that's why I use my coffee as an example because I love coffee so much. I love coffee. You know, that is yeah. Say so yes, the love is fake. Once you love someone because of a reason or something then it means if the things or thing or reason is not there anymore, then you are gone. That's true. It's just like, it's just like your boyfriend. You know, you know, some of you, when you were in the world, you had one, two, three boyfriends, you know, doing all these things, thinking it was life. And many of you then too, you will not say you love uh, all of them. Some of you, you loved one and just were using the others. So when maybe there's one that was coughing out money for you, and maybe now when the person is not able to cough the money you want, you know, we call it cough, <coughs> they cough the money out. When they know you call them stingy, you see, you're so stingy, you're so stingy, please go away, just I'm not, don't call my number again, delete my number, because you don't even love him anyway. So it's easy for you to say, delete my number, go away, stingy man, because he's not coughing the money. But that one that you love, that is not giving you the money, even if you're asking for five dollars, it says I don't have it. You're like, okay, baby, it's fine. Don't worry, don't worry. We don't worry money. It's fine. It's okay. You even be petting him on top of the money he didn't leave you because you love that one. You love that one. Yes, the love that's you. Too. Yes, they cut out the money. <coughs> the money comes out because you know you're just doing your thing. But the one you love, even if he tells you, babe, we don't have food in the house. You can, even you are ready to collect from that one that is your coffin and give this one because you feel this is one I love. We die here, no problem. So if you're if your friends with benefit with somebody, when you're no longer benefiting from there, you will run quick. You will run fast. And that's hypocr hypocrisy kind of friendship. Me, I tell people, people that know me, they know me. If I if I don't, if if my spirit cannot associate with you, it will not associate with you. You're not gonna force me. I will not associate with you because I don't want to play hypocrite with you. Because me, in my mouth, <laughs> if I see something that is not right, I will tell you, babe, this thing, you know, is not good. Or this thing. I don't know how to hide my mouth. I will, I will say it in love, but you will know that this is not good. So if I don't like you, why would I not want to be doing I said this? Like I love you when I don't love you. Why? If I, if, if I, like you say, you can't say you don't love people or you don't like people, but back then, if I don't like you, you go not say I don't like you, you don't go beat me. If you don't like me, Mr. Paul, know you don't like me. But don't come and play nice. Yeah, Nina, I love you so much. Yeah, Nina, I... But you know, say you don't love me. Why? It's wrong. There are even people, like for example, there are people in the ministry that I don't associate with. Not that I don't like them, but I just feel like we will, we will never get along. We will never get along. There's no problem, but when I you know, it's also important, like I said the last time, character is also a, a, character is also a problem in this life. So if I see sometimes from the way you talk, I already can't, because there's something God has given me in this life. I don't know why I'm able to detect. If I see you, I'm able to say how you are. Even before I repented, before I repented, a lot of my friends, I remember one time I was in Italy. 
and uh, we had some friends, there were about four, four of them. And I was just, you know, based on how they talk, I'm, I was just able to tell them how they, even when I had to say, yeah, we charge you know, all this, I said, for who is the witch, please, I'm not a witch, but, you know, it's more like a strong, I have a strong discernment when it comes to people, to an extent. But the only difference is me, I'm somebody that sometimes I ignore it, and I just want to accept everybody. And that's also very dangerous because when you are too good to everybody, accept everybody, they, when they strike you, they strike you really bad. That's the bad thing too about me. I just like to accept people and everybody, oh, it's okay, it's fine. It's, it's okay, we are cool, we are cool, we are cool. But it shouldn't be like that, you know? But the point is, if I don't like you, like if we don't flow, we don't flow, I won't come and force it and say, oh my God, oh my God, go win Kate. How are you? And I'll be doing that, but I know I don't like you, why? Why? There was a time, woman of God, when kids is here. There was a time, I don't know, God puts a kind of love for me. God puts a kind of love for her. How do you put this English? I put, I make another talk of rubbish. Show. God puts the love of her in my heart. She's here. Sometime, I think sometime, beginning of this year. I don't know why. I don't, I even had to say to her, I said, I don't know, God put a kind of love in my heart for you it's strange because i was like never her friend i just see her from far and that's not, i didn't have a problem with her but we're just not close or anything but there was just this love god put in my heart for her and i said i don't know why god puts you know the, this kind of love for for us in my heart for you but sometimes it happens for a reason maybe god will put it for you to be praying for the person it doesn't for them after a while that love will just it doesn't mean the love will go away but it will not be like that strong you know even sometimes i will ask her are you okay because i didn't know why i was feeling like that he said i don't know how to fake i said as this god bless you the woman of god the brother come god bless you you know me i don't know how to i don't know how to fake it sorry if i don't like you you will know like from my countenance, you will know that you'll be talking. I might not, you will know that I'm not paying attention to what you're saying because I don't want to talk too much. I, I don't get power to talk with you, you know. You will feel it, you will know. But it doesn't mean that I don't like you. But second, day, even in school of power, there's so many people that personally, me, I know we can never get along, but it doesn't mean we have a problem. No, we don't have issues. Trust me, we don't have. If I see you today, we hug, you know, because all of us are in different countries, you know. It's, it's a good thing to come to a country where your sister is, you're able to like hug them. Oh my God. So you are the, so now I get the face of the person that I see commenting. You know, you hug them. You're so happy when you meet them. But there's some people that no matter how I hug, if you want to beg me to come and stay in your house, you want to have home rooms. I can never skip your house because I know we will never get along. Because I have a, my own character that might not suit you. Your character, because even based on comments, there's some people that have watched how they write, I watch how they behave. I'm like, no, mm -mm. we will not get along because I know myself. But will I fake it and say, oh, everything is good. The love of God is enough for all of us. And I'll be faking it. Then I'll be, then when I'm now with you, I will now be angry. Or if you say something, I will now be pissed and you will allow me to sin. God forbid, not be me and you go do that one. You better you are in your corner in peace. You know, you can love somebody from far. And it's still good. God did not say you should, everybody has to be your friend and come inside your house. And No, you can love people from far, but they don't have to be in your circle. Or they don't have to be like your friend. God bless you, man of God, Ruth. They don't have to be in your, you know, don't say because you're in school of power. No, it's a sin that we don't, no, no, you can be in school. You can agree to disagree. It is okay. As long as you're not sinning, as long as you're not doing something that is contrary to the word of God. There are so many, see, we are almost about a thousand in school of power or more. You want to tell me that you love everybody and you relate with everybody the same way? No, you cannot. You know the winch. It's not possible. Just be you. And I mean, <laughs> you just know there are people you will not agree with. Me, there are some people that the way I talk, it annoys them. I'm telling you, they might not tell you, but I know. Some, some people, the way I talk annoys them because they feel like I'm too, I'm too blunt or maybe I'm too... I just say things, I'm not a little bit, I don't polish it. I'm not posh. I don't say it the way it should sound nice. I just say it the way it is. And they don't like it, it's not suiting to their ear. But darling, there are people that like it and they will hear it as it is. And there's some people that when they are trying to say something, I beg talk them as it be. Don't go, stop going to the corner. I know you are going to the corner, but just say it as it is. 
and they start going around the corner. Me, that's in the they 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 they, they vex me, they irritate me for it. Yeah. Say it as it is, nobody is going to flog you. Don't do fake love things, don't do everybody can you know just be cool with you. It doesn't work like that. I remember when I was going to New York in 2019 for Woman of God's program, and there was a lady who had um reached out to me that she wanted to share room with me. I told her no. She's a school of power, not because I don't like her, but I've watched her speak. I said, no, we're not going to get along, number one. We're not even friends, like friends. Maybe like we have been talking on the phone, chatting, you know? It's a way, like, for example, woman of God, good. I've seen her once, you know, before I met her again. I met her in the evening. We've, you know, we've chatted well on Facebook, on phone. We've talked. I know from the way she talks, I know the kind of person she is to an extent. I know if it's somebody that I can cope with or somebody that I can, you know, I can relate well with. And she's really open. She's very open. She's somebody you can really relate with and you will enjoy it. It's not because she's here, I'm saying it. I'm saying it because it's true. And this is how my spirit is. I like open people. I don't like people that have to pretend about something. You want to, you want to prove a point. You know something, when they see you, they'll be speaking big, big grammar. Oh, you know, when this will be different, see they don't go to the toilet. But not them, not their shit, they smell past if they go to the toilet. Be yourself. You don't have to impress me. Be you. If you like to chop bone, <laughs> if you like to eat bone when you are with your friends, if you meet me, chop your bone. I know we collect the bone from you. Just eat it. Just be you. Don't come and be using fucking knife and be cutting it and be doing it as if you don't eat the bone. Oh, like as if you know the mess. As if you know you are so. My dear, calm down. Not be me. If mess worry me, I go mess up. <laughs> I might not do it immediately in your front, but man, if I feel comfortable with you, if I feel like to fat, I say, sorry, babe, I got to fat, though. <laughs> I can go mess up, man. Let me meet kids, Jesus. I don't make my belly the pay me. I will release it, and I will laugh about it. So don't come and try to prove a point to me. Speak big, big English because you have PhD, you have master's. Eh, uh -huh. Now only you go to school. Me, Seth, I go to school. So calm down. Don't be doing all those things. But you know, but some people would think because I said no means I don't like, I went all in school of power. Why would she even say no? Why would she do? No, I know Sabi you. One, we are not like friends. Two, even the way you talk, me and you cannot relate like that. And it's okay because you don't have to please everyone. And <laughs> everyone cannot sound like you and you cannot sound like them. So people that sound like themselves will relate. Me, people that sound like me somehow, they will relate with me. Hallelujah. It's, it's like that. It's, it's, it's like that. So people should stop faking this thing. You fake it, fake it. Even in ministry, you fake it like you love me. You fake it. You're only faking it because you feel, okay, let me fake it. Maybe I'll get a word from her. But what of God, you bless me. So, oh, I love you so much. I just like how, I just like how you, you, you preach God's word. I'm so blessed. I love you. I did it. In your mind, in your heart, I see this one. See her big nose. Hmm. That one just feeling like I don't know what she's feeling like. Eh, thank you. Maybe the big nose is just using the big nose to preach. God bless you. Me, I know it's big. Leave it. Just don't worry. Eh? Don't help me talk about myself. Let me help you tell you. My nose is big. I like it. Leave it. Don't fake nothing. Stop faking. Too much faking in the ministry. My God. Me, the things I see sometimes, I'm like, ha, huh, Lord, help us. This ministry is not easy. I'm telling you, people faking it everywhere. If you don't like me, you don't have to pretend that you like me. Don't watch me either. It's okay. But don't come giving compliments when you know it's not coming from your heart. Why? It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not right. There's some people that even if I've never really spoken to them, if I need to go to, for example, if I, if I want to go to Houston today now, and maybe where you live is close to the, where, where the program is, and I don't have enough money to pay for my hotel. There's some people that if they offer me, of course, I will not go and ask you, like, can I stay in your house? Tell me if you know, if you know they really like. If they offer me, I say, woman of God, are you coming? I say, oh, please, you can stay in my house. You are free. Of course, I'll pray about it, but because I already know that you are open, I like your spirit. If I pray and God gives me the go ahead, I will come. But there's some people that the spirit doesn't feel with them. God might still give you the go ahead, but you'll be feeling somehow like, ah, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, this person will not relate to me. Why do I have to be here? Why do I have to go? But you still go because you want to be obedient to God. Hallelujah. There's some people that I've watched them in the ministry. I like their spirit. Although it doesn't mean because somebody's spirit is so good means they are real too. Some people can just be all you know what I mean. But I just, I'm able to relate with people 
when I see that you are open, I like people that are open. Not everything you will just be doing as if I don't know. Hallelujah. So please, people should stop this hypocrisy thing in, in the body of Christ. It's not right. If you if you if you if you feel and your spirit doesn't have to align with everyone, it's which is okay. There's some people that something something about them will not just you not just like something about them. It doesn't mean you hate them, but there's just something about them you don't like, and it's okay. But don't come and be doing, oh, I love you, sis. I love you. You bless me so much. I love you. You now be doing, or maybe you went bless them. Oh, God, say I should um, bless you with a hundred dollar or five hundred or one thousand. But you know, God did not really say it. You just want to do it because you want to show off. You just want to show off to them that I can give you this money. You understand? Or you're showing it up because you want them to put it on Facebook and say, oh, this person blessed me with this amount. They push me, thank her. You know, be feeling, yeah, yeah, I bless her. With, I, I got the money. I got the money. Uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. If God is not telling you to give me one dime, please do not give me one dime. I don't need it. Don't bless somebody because you want to show off. You want somebody to applaud you. Don't bless somebody because you want them to, to, to blow your horn. Oh, you didn't give me one thousand. Oh, you didn't give me somebody. Oh, you didn't give me this one. You're not be feeling important in your house. No, God gave you that money because God knows that you're capable of blessing somebody and not feeling proud. Hallelujah. So let's stop doing things like hypocrites. You want people to see you a certain way. You want people to see you have money. You want people to see that there's something about you that is so, you know, but you're not doing it from your heart. God sees. Let me tell you, no matter how anybody says anything, God in heaven is the only one. I keep saying it. God sees everybody's heart. God knows how you are. And thank God for dreams. You know, sometimes you think you can hide nastiness. <laughs> hide it. Be showing something else. Why do you think we have dreams? God will show somebody that your nastiness in the dream or people the nastiness. Do not be like, hmm, really? You, you see me doing your hypocrisy thing, but they know as you be. <laughs> <laughs> they know exactly how you are in the spirit. They know this one a lie. <laughs> Don't be her. She just faking it. So it's better you just be yourself. Just be you. Just be you. Nobody will kill you. Nobody will beat you. Just be you. And it's, the truth is, not everybody will like you, even as you are you. And it's okay. If everybody likes you, you don't know, say it's dangerous. It's very dangerous when everybody likes you. Very, very dangerous. And they tell you, just they watch your back if everybody likes you. Hallelujah. He said, God will expose you. <laughs> he said, God will expose you. And I said, God will expose I'm telling you, God will expose your, your butt, man. Somebody will dream. So he does that with God will show, show that this God, he knows how to really deal with people. He will just show child. So this is kind of like this. Hey, now wow. People sometimes you think maybe devil gave me the dream. God will show you again the dream again. She and let me like, ah, this this person is like this. Ah, Father. That's why if you're working for God, just be just just be holy. Just be. It doesn't mean that you're not battling things, though. Don't get me wrong, though. All of us we are battling with things. Sometimes you battle with anger. Sometimes you battle with something, you know. But we're still telling God to help us. But don't be a nasty person and come out and be acting like you're good. And we can see in the spirit that you're so nasty. Your nastiness gets degree. But you're coming to act like. Or maybe you're somebody that you always just gossip about people. You're so good at speaking so bad about people. Nobody good, now only you good. Every other person is bad, but you're the only one that is good. Or you're the only one that God is using. Any other person, God will use them. All this nastiness, God sees it. You want to give an offering. You want the whole world to know, I gave woman of God Nina 500 as offering. Or if I don't announce it that you gave me $500 offering, you'll be angry. God is seeing that wicked heart of yours. Woman of God, you know, did not put knife on her neck and say, give her that offering. You came and you said, God said, I should give you. Ah, thank you. God bless you. The only thing I owe you is prayer and, 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 and thank you. But you want me to come and... See, let me tell you something. Our mommy has raised us well and she's still raising us well. And being thankful, when you bring us something on Facebook, it's not because you really want to just let people see that the person is you know you're doing it for record sake because now nobody you beg the person so in case tomorrow the person says you came to beg them you can bring evidence and say at least i put it on facebook i thanked her she gave me the money 
they won't have any reason to lie because they say all oh, these things are evidence. You keep them in advance just in case somebody wants to now change the story. Be like, I, 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 I don't like that. This is how it happened. That is why you're bringing out these things, not because of. But some people want you by fire, by force. If they give you ten dollar, the world must know that they give you the ten dollar. If you don't praise them for that ten dollar, you are in trouble. It's wrong. Don't help people for a wrong motive. If God is not saying don't give, keep your money. It's your money after all. Nobody beg you to give, nobody beg you to bring out the money. The one of God is not raising false prophets or false, false teachers or false. She's raising good children. And we are we are growing the way we're raised, and God is helping us in this growth. Let her, her her effort not be you know useless because she's working effortlessly every day, praying for us to be useful, praying every time for us to be useful. Be useful now. Be useful. That's all she wants. Be useful. Father, use them. Let them be useful. Help them. But some people are just want to, they just want you to know that if I do this for you, it's, you have to do this back. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. Don't force friendship. I tell people another thing. Stop forcing friendship. If it's not working, it's not working. I'll bear. Don't work here, sir. If the friendship not the work, leave her. Stop forcing friendship. When you force friendship, that's even when the thing goes scatter. Stop forcing friendship. There's some people that naturally you connect with them. You just be like, my God, even they're like more, they become like more than a sister to you. Because that is how God wants you to be. And you now you'll be jealous. Be like, well, what are they even feeling like? What are they feeling like? Didn't they meet in school apart? Why are they all over the place acting like that? Because God put the connection like that. <laughs> and God will connect you to somebody probably like that or even more. Why are you angry? Why are you angry? Don't force it. And you want to now force it too. They let me force the friendship. Mother of God, Nina, how are you? Mother of God, Nina, have you eaten? Like, you know, some people do with mommy, you know. <laughs> mommy, have you eaten? Mommy, have you eaten? Mommy, have you taken a shower? Mommy, have you gone to the toilet? Mommy. <laughs> At the end of the day, the person, you start irritating the person. Instead of, instead of it to be friendship, it will not be annoyance. What does this person say? What for? I mean, so don't they write me. Wait, see. <laughs> Stop forcing friendship. If it's not working, it's not working. If it's working, I then tell you, it will be so easy and smooth. You don't need to force nothing. Nothing. People think that this ministry thing is competition, and that's why if you're not careful, you're going to feel and you feel woefully in this work with God. People think that God's work is competition. You see somebody doing something, you say, oh, let me go and do it too. Me say, I can do it. Oh, they're coming to, they're coming online five times a week. Me say, if I want to come five times a week, I want to do it. The person that is coming five, thousand, five times a week is single. <laughs> the person that is preaching five times in the week is single. You, you have children at home with a husband. You want to come five times a week. What, what, is, what is scatter your home because you want to do competition with somebody else? Are you for real? Are you for real? God gave you maybe one or two times a week to come. God enjoys that one or two times you're coming. God is pleased with you. You want to go and do over Sabi because you want to feel a certain way. We are in competition. And why, why is she coming every time? He said, I want to come. Be careful. Be careful. See, this work eh, is plenty. If God gives you the work of everybody to do, you will die. You will serve. You, you can even Jesus did not. Jesus came and did what he did now. He said he's raising now disciples to continue. Why didn't Jesus come and finish your own work? <laughs> he came, he did the one he could do. Raise disciples. We are part of those disciples now. Go and do the rest. Even we cannot finish. The other generation will still continue. That's, that's why I always say if Jesus tarries, except Jesus comes. If Jesus doesn't come, you, you are doing your own. Others are still coming to continue with the work. So if you are jealous, you are angry, you are this, you are that, and God says, okay, you know what? Take everybody's work, prophetess, pastor, evangelist, this one, and do it. Only you. You go die. You will die. So now that you are still young and able to do what you want to do, full call, just to do the one way God sent you to do. Stop giving excuses. Stop looking for what to. I cannot do it. I cannot speak well. I, I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I don't know what to do. I don't know. No, no. Many of you gifts, a lot of gifts, lines sitting inside of you, like that. 
It's not useful. You're not using it. Nothing. Tell me. This is, this is a wake-up call for many of you. Whatever God has put inside of you to do, even if it's for one second, go out there and do it. Stop saying, oh, but, but uh, if God says, go out and do it for 20 minutes, but 20 minutes is too small now. Who will watch me in 20 minutes? Leave that for God. When God gives you 20 minutes, go through the 20 minutes and get out. People might not watch you immediately, but maybe later, among the people that will come for testimony be one day, but these people did not watch me. That means because they went back later to watch. So put it until God gives you 10 hours to preach before you go and preach. Maybe you don't have that grace for 10 hours preaching. Other people have the grace to do it. You don't have it, but at least the 20 minutes, the 30 minutes God has given you the grace to preach, use it and use it well. That is what is important. God will not give us the same thing to do. Some people are doing, for example, like last time I talked about fasting. We look at woman of God, Dokas. She, Apostle Dokas, she, she did 15 days fasting. Even me, I told her, man, this is a different level, woman of God. This one a different level, different grace. And I said, I don't tap. I don't tap this one. <laughs> you know, some of you like to tap. I said, but I don't tap oh, because it's a different level. God, man, 15 days, you know, chop. Woman of God, man, this is a different level. But man, I don't tap this kind one. I cannot even tap this. Because I won't lie, 15 days, no food with children in this house. Che, not die with that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I like to be real because I, will, I don't know if I have the grace to do it. Like I said, you don't know if you have the grace to do something until God tells you to do it. You know that you have the grace. Hallelujah. 15 days is a lot for me. Look at the seven days we did. I, I, was, I, I, I was almost, you know, the, the kids jump on you. You, 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 don't, you don't even know how to push them away. Like, people, sh do, do you think they understand that mommy is fasting? They don't understand. They just want to play with mommy. So imagine if I have to continue for another few days, 15 days. Now uh, when you go sing, drive on, oh, shall rise again. Drive on, oh, shall uh, I would not die with that too. But God knows that right now, maybe later, right now, I'm not going to down with children. That's what he's giving to people that they can do it. So when I not come and be jealous of somebody's fast, ha, who don't like food, who don't like better food to chop, who don't like okra soup, and sorry if you know you are fasting here, I'm sorry that I'm mentioning food, who doesn't like good food to chop? But me, I say, one of God, this is different, oh my, this grace now different than next level, 15 days. But me, I cannot tap, oh, but man, I salute you, man. She was laughing, but it's true. I will not tap to it, because now tell me, if I see her now functioning in another dimension, you see all the things, all the all the, the, the things she's doing. Woman of God, because you see, you see how hard she works to come online to do God's work. And I'll be jealous. <laughs> jealous. But if God tell me I go and fast 15 days now, I'm not gonna feed one. Well. Why should I be jealous? The only thing is if you see something that she's functioning in that like, ah, Father, I like this gift, I tap. But maybe the tapping you tap, you might receive it, but you might, it might not function now. It might function maybe in five, ten years when you are free a little bit with your children. You know you can do it. God will not say, go and do that fast. And maybe you might not even do the fast like that. You might even do it for three days and you'll get it. It's to start functioning in your life. So don't don't be doing all this thing just because you feel... If God gives you 20 minutes, do it. If he gives you 10 minutes, do it. Some of you here, God has told you, go online, go and encourage people. You are still sitting on that assignment you have not done it and you want god to come and use your mouth and be speaking and be prophesying the one he told you to do you have not done it but you want big assignment how how yeah i'm not jealous see the work she's putting in i will just tap and celebrate that's it tap and but unfortunately it's not everybody that is thinking like this some people be like mm -hmm. it's the only one it's the only one that's only one it's only one people the moment go and do the work now if it's easy do it's see yeah god is looking for you so you want you're available and become you want to do 15 days go and do 15 days i'm here i will also give you whatever you're looking for go, go and do it but do it for, with a good a, a good heart let it be coming from a good place many will not want to do it and it's not just about the 15 days. Sometimes you see her, she's doing 15 days, back to back. The next week, she's doing seven days. And that week, she's doing three Ah, uh, uh, you know the rest, madam. Because that's her assignment. If God gave me that kind of assignment to be doing like her, I feel friends. That's why God will not let me right now to be doing all this back to back 15 days. I will die with that. I don't have that kind of grace. So why should I be jealous of her? Why? People have to be careful. Be careful, be careful for what you also wish for. <laughs> be very careful. 
Be very careful what you are wishing for, what you are praying for. Be careful too. Be sure that you are able to handle. Hallelujah. So when God tells you do something, please go and be, if you know some of you, I know some of you have assignments. God gave me this topic hot hot yesterday and today. Say, so go and tell them. Some of you, God has given you an assignment to do, you know, do them. God said, go and worship. Go and worship. Go and worship me on, on Facebook for one hour. You have not done it. You are shy. And is it God? Is it my mind? Maybe it's my mind. I don't even know how to do this. I don't even know. God has told you, go and bless somebody. Why should I even bless her? I better go. No. I bet me, I don't have money to give anybody. You have not done your assignment. God is telling you, go and talk to your neighbor. Go and check, check on your neighbor. I bet that woman doesn't even want to talk to me. Why would I want to talk to her? Mm, you have not done your assignment. And you want big assignments. And you want big assignment. You say, God loves me or he will not give me that faster than <laughs> Faster. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm gonna be like, God, let me not give me that kind. <laughs> Your wife, they do some kind of powerful, eh? Nah. <laughs> I'm telling you, that day we're both laughing now, Pastor. You know, Pastor Bill, God bless you, Man of God, for joining. We were laughing and we were telling the wife, we were saying, Man, this is another, this next level, Man of God. <laughs> Pastor said, You're on your own. <laughs> be fasting. <laughs> But it is not with me. <laughs> Let me manage my, my three days or seven days. Of <laughs> oh my God. That day I was laughing. I said, My God, this is not for the pastor. I said, No, don't be there. You follow me 15 days. Do that. <laughs> God will not tell me to do it. Do it too. <laughs> I cannot forget that day. It was so funny. <laughs> he said, Do, do a lot. Don't be there. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, people have different ways. That's why you have to be you have to be careful. There's some people that will hear audible voice of God because that's how God wants it. Maybe you now your own hearing will be you will hear, but maybe not audibly, like <clears throat> maybe you'll be hearing from your spirit or maybe dreams, you know, you will not be jealous. I am God. Or maybe maybe God has spoken through some people's mouth. They speak, you know, God's word. And you're like, why should God use that? Why can't God speak to me? I even share this God. I even share, ah, ah. Why can't God use you? Why can't God? Have you made yourself available for God to use you from before it did not speak, your, speak through your mouth? People have to be careful. <clears throat> the wicked, the you know, confession, confession. God don't catch you today, not today. <laughs> One of God players said, I do fasting <clears throat> because the spirit will say, join the person because you have filled your own. Otherwise, my tea and bread. <laughs> it is well, you know. But really, God made it clear. Why did you come to this world? Why are you here? Why are you here? You're not here to eat tea and bread. You're not here to, to, to eat fufu and ebusi and, and, and die and go. You're here for a reason. And each day that comes, you're one head as you're one one day ahead of your of, of your grave. Why are you not doing that? What God has you know brought you to this earth to do? Why? Just waiting, waiting for, waiting for me. I better go to your assignment. Don't be afraid of anyone. If God is telling you, go online and preach, please do it. Do it because there's a backup. He's your backup. He will back you up. You're not alone. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you to the end of the earth. And he will be with you. So why are you afraid? Yes, it's true. So from time to time, people will come and abuse you. Eh, so what? People will come to your inbox and curse you. Eh, so what? So what? We will all be abused. We will all be cursed. Me, they've cursed me here. They've cursed me on my on my inbox. Eh, so what? <laughs> did he stop me from doing God's work? No. Did he remove hair from my hair? No. Did he make me less? Did he make me to be broke? No. Just do the work. If you want boldness, ask him. He will help you. He will give you the boldness to be able to do it. If you need wisdom, and please, I beg. One thing you should really pray, and eh? one of your biggest prayers, eh? as believer, please ask God for wisdom. Wisdom is it's like number one, you need it. The love of God is important too, but you see, you see sense, sense to know how to talk to people is important. Some people, they, 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 <laughs> some people don't have sense. <laughs> they never have sense in the world. They still don't have sense in Christ, and it's sad. Wisdom is important. People need wisdom. 
you need wisdom to know how to talk to somebody. It's not, see, wisdom is not only about you just knowing how to preach the word of God or how to break down the word. Wisdom is also you know how to talk to someone. You know how to relate with people. Don't just open your mouth as if there's, you know, open your mouth anyhow you talk and you close it back. Be able to know how to talk to people. Some people don't have to talk to people. They just talk to you anyhow, close their mouth back and they act as if they have sense. But sense you don't have. Why? You have to be very, very careful. <clears throat> wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. He will give it to you free of charge. He's not charging you for anything. Is this one is not clean up because I'll say, uh, come on, do this. I can't. No. <laughs> and I tell you, <laughs> wisdom is one of my prayer points. Yeah, one of God. Exactly. You need wisdom in everything you do. Wisdom. Sometimes God will tell you, go and talk to your neighbor about something. You know, just go to your neighbor and just go and feel your mouth and say, Jesus Christ, you repent. You know what? Now that one, no, no, Jesus. If that one smokes, drinks, does everything that, that, is, that has nothing to do with Jesus. Like, when God says, go and talk to her, God is not saying, go and preach. God might just say, go and talk to her. I mean, you're going to say, hi, how are you? I like your dress. You look so beautiful. They'll be like, oh, thank you. They are smoking. Oh, thank you. Oh, you've, they'll be like, you've been my neighbor for a while. I've never spoken to you. My bad. What's your name again? Introduction has started. Introduction, don't start with that. And after we're like, okay, wish you a nice day. Bye. God bless you. Get to your house. Tomorrow night, she feels to you and I say, hi, neighbor, how are you? She will greet you. You have opened the conversation with that woman now. Tell me when you, when maybe, for example, you will now see her again. Maybe she's not feeling well. Oh, I haven't seen you for a while. Where have you been? Oh, I've been sick. I haven't been feeling well. I say, and now I'm still sick. Oh, wow. Would you like me to pray for you? It's just a request. You're not saying, come out in Jesus' name. I command that sickness to go. I command you to be acting like a mad person. No. Would you like me to pray for you? You are asking them. Now, them get their body. If they say, oh, really? What's that? Or maybe, oh, yes or no. You say, okay. If they say no, it doesn't stop you from not praying for them. You are sick people. Father, please heal her. Father, please reveal yourself to her. Father, open her eyes. Father, touch her. But some people just go and lay hands. It's just them. Come on, come on. You see how that woman was <laughs> almost boxing that pastor. <laughs> that pastor said, come on. <laughs> they don't send you message. You're not going to do by first deliver. They're going to slap you. <laughs> you want to go and do by first deliverance. They will beat you. <laughs> Demon will tear you. <laughs> Why are you disturbing the demon? The person is telling you, I like my demon. I like the demon. Leave me. Just leave us. We are one. <laughs> you want to come and <laughs> you want to come and cast the demon out. The demon will cast you. <laughs> Let me tell you, even deliverance. God is that's as I say, God is teaching a lot of us, and He's still teaching us. Even mommy, Apostle Belema, even deliverance. Deliverance has to be something, it has to be willingly. If somebody comes to you with a with, with your problem, me, if you come to my boss, some people come to me in my boss and say, Oh my god, I'm having spiritual husband, I'm having the I'm having that. Why well, somebody is coming to choke me? Somebody's going two things. I can ask God, Father, I, 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 do you leave me to pray for this person or should I just type the prayer? If I'm left to type, I will type. If you believe the demon will believe you, I will tell you you see your deliver. If God says you see the demon, you see it in the dream. Sometimes God will say, Call the person and pray for them. But me now. Because God said, I should call you and pray for you. What is your own opinion? Do you want to be prayed for? That thing that is disturbing you, do you want to be prayed for? Meaning when I ask you, so would you like me to, you know, conduct a deliverance on you? Because this is, this is a spiritual problem. You need to be delivered, you know? And you tell me, yes. Now you have given me the go ahead to pray for you. Meaning now, whatever demon that is inside you will not come and be going back and forth. You have given me the right to do that. Hallelujah. But I'm not going to say, you say you have this, uh, put your right hand on your head, say, Jesus, deliver me, seven times. The person might be looking at you, what, 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 what's going on here? They don't understand what is going on. Or some people don't want to stop, maybe like, they tell you spiritual husband, spiritual wife, this person sleep with them. And then you ask them, or you hear, but you're fornicating. If you're fornicating, and you're, but definitely if you're sleeping with your boyfriend, this thing will happen. Are you ready to start living right for God? <clears throat> Sometimes you see them, they are quiet for a while. They, want, they are thinking because... They are thinking, does it mean me and my boyfriend will not go do anything again? Ha. This one hard though. Do I really want to be delivered? Sometimes you know from their behavior that they are not ready. And I tell them, 
there was one that came and said, you're not, even from your admission, you're not right. I said, you know what, let's leave this believer because I wouldn't want to pray for you. Then more will come and attack you to be very bad. So you know what, let's leave it. When you're ready to be delivered and I am free and God leads you to me, get back to me. But now I'm not going to pray for you. You don't force this thing. You don't force it. Don't want to force by force deliverance. You want to show you have power. You know, some people want to do deliverance because they want to show demon that we have, I have power. I want to show you that I have power. They want to show people I can cast out them. I have power. <laughs> come on, do the one demon will slap you and say, the, the, person, the person that has the body did not tell you that you should come and sweep anything. Leave us now. <laughs> Leave us alone. Come and disgrace you for what? You don't need that. You don't need it. I mean, I've done so many deliverance. I have a lot of recordings on my phone where they are saying all kind of things. But I don't need to show up and come and put it up on Facebook and say, I'm not saying people don't, don't get me wrong. You know, when I'm saying something, I'm saying it based on me. If I'm led to put it out, I'll put it out for people to learn. But I have them, but I don't post them. I'd rather post more of testimonies than showing people's deliverance and all that. For me, it's not really, you know what I mean? It's not really, God is not leading me like that. If I do deliverance like life, it's different. But if I do deliverance private, I don't usually come and post it. I, I just know that I have it, so, but I'm not posting it, you know? But some people want to prove a point, like, I have the power, I cast out. All those demons were talking. Even, but even God said, don't be happy because you're casting a demon. When the disciples went out and casted, <clears throat> and they prayed and they were casting them, and they came and reported to Jesus, we prayed and we're casting out demons and this in your name. God said, don't rejoice because you're casting out demons. Rejoice because your name is in the book of life. That should be your focus and your goal. To make heaven to live right. Every other thing you're doing is just plus. The focus, the goal should be, Father, let me run this race, this heavenly race. Let me run it well and make heaven. That's the focus. Any other thing, forget it. If you want, cast out demon, cast out uh, beast, cast out anything. If you miss heaven, you see that hell fire, those demons that you cast out will still torment you. Is that what you want? Sometimes it's good to be conscious of these things. Father, am I pleasing you? Father, am I living right for you? Father, are you happy with what I'm doing? Father, if there's something inside me that I'm not doing right, help me, deliver me. You know? Even me, sometimes maybe I wake up, you know, sometimes you sleep, you just know something happened in your dream and you don't know what happened. And you're feeling so moody, you're feeling so angry. Of course, spiritual husband, you're just feeling a certain way. Sometimes me, you're going to do self deliverance. Thank God mommy has made this thing easy. Be happy because your name is, yeah. Thank God mommy, mom of God, Balibabi has made it easy with all these many, many deliverance videos she has done. Sometimes I will go, 40 minutes demon, I put my hand on my head. Sometimes even as the prayer is going, I'll be feeling, you know, you feel like something, You feel, of course, maybe you don't manifest, but you don't feel like something left you or you feel like a weight just came off of your shoulder. Sometimes I'll be led to call maybe woman of God just or someone. Woman of God, please, I had this dream or I'm not feeling this. I just don't feel happy. She'll pray and she'll cast out that thing. It can be anybody. You understand what I mean? It can be anyone. So don't, 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 don't do all these things because you want to show us, you want to do, you want to do. No. Your focus should be, Father, am I pleasing you? I want to make it. I always tell God, God, I don't want to work for you, come this far and still miss it. It's better you are in the world. You know you are in the world. You know you signed your, your hell contract by yourself. But you cannot work for God. Cast out devil. Cast out demons. You know, raise the dead, even heal the sick, and still you end up where the demons will still torment you. Then what was the essence of even doing all this? That's why we tell people, don't let anybody drag you to hell. It's not what it is. Don't let anybody drag you to hell. People will step on your toes. People will annoy you. People will say things you don't like. Yes, it will hurt you. Yes, move on. Keep going. Keep going. Me, people have done things I didn't like. But do I hate them? No. Because nobody will drag me to hell. The only difference is I will just disassociate with you because I don't want headache. I don't want to talk, talk. I don't want to talk too much. But I don't hate you. No. Because why would I hate you when I know when I'm going to go and pray in my closet and God is saying, uh-uh, 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 forgive that person. You can't pray like this. No, no, no. But I will just give you space because I will feel like you will be a problem to me. So, Father, please, just let her be in her corner. I love her with the love of God, but let her just stay in her corner. And which is fine. 
which is fine. Like I said, you don't have to, everybody doesn't have to be your friend. Everybody doesn't have to, you don't have to please everybody. But don't let anybody drag you to hell. It's not worth it. I'm telling you, many of us, we know where we are coming from. You know how deep in the world you were. You made us love nonsense and you not come to Christ and still be doing rubbish. It's better you stay in the world, you know, okay, you're in the world. If I die, I go to hell. Okay, I go to hell. And I, I chose this part. But you can't be in Christ and still be acting stupid. You can't be in Christ and still be doing things that you are doing while you're in the world. If you need help, go for deliverance. Because one thing people don't understand is whatever that you have gone through in the world, even in Christ, the devil will still be fighting with that spirit. It's left for you to do what? It's left for you to now say, Father, I need deliverance. Help me. This spirit, they keep fighting me. It's like spirit of lust, for example. If you're somebody that's in the world, you are a butterfly, you used to jump everywhere. You think that that spirit will just go and sleep and leave you? No. The spirit will still come from time to time to see. Let's see if we can. You can enter if you're angry, spiritual husband, or a spirit of lust, or something. It's left for you to cast it out, pray in tongues, but if you feel it entered you, you call somebody to pray for you or do self-deliverance. But you won't say because spirit of lust that entered you, you'll now be jumping from one bed to the other and be sleeping with every brother in church. No. If you're in the world, stay in the world. You know we're in the world. You are enjoying the world. But don't bring nastiness from the world in Christ. It no makes sense. And you are running this race. You're wasting your time. Every day I tell God, I say, Father, help me. I'm not perfect. I know that you're still <laughs> God has worked on me. And God is still working. It shows that sometimes me, eh, I used to thank God. I should say, thank you, God, for working on me and still working on me. Me, I'm not... I'm not an easy love to crack oh. I stop on I said, Father, thank you. Thank you for being so patient. Thank you. Because even me sometimes, me, if I check myself, I'm like, man, you know a real word, you know. You know a real word. You know, like, you know when you like try to <laughs> when you try to scold your own self, you know? But see how patient God is working on each one of us every time. And when you see there's a change in you, you're like, man, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't bring nastiness to the to the body of Christ and be acting like assistant Jesus Christ, assistant Holy Spirit. Now only you shall be God. Now only you shall be do this one. Now only you shall be do this. You be every other person is bad. You're, you're just talking nonsense about people. And you think that you're hearing from God. My sister, go and sit down and check yourself. Something is wrong with you. It doesn't work like that. Is it that you are a gossip? You want to maintain it? You don't love people. There's no love of God in your heart. You want to maintain that? Or you go to God and say, please, Father, I know that there's a spirit in me that is not right. Let me tell you, if you're born again, if you have a nasty spirit, you know. Anybody that, anybody that is really like, I'm talking about you are born again, and you have nastiness in you, you say you don't know, you're a liar. Now lie. You know, because you know, when you do something, you know, God doesn't like this thing I'm doing. Because you have the spirit of God inside you that, 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 that is your conscience. It convicts you that you're doing something. It's just like you are born again. You know, fornication is wrong. You now go and sleep with somebody and you want to say you don't know it's a sin. You know it's a sin. If you have nastiness in you, you know that you are not saying, Father, help me. Or you just want to remain like that. Or maybe the spirit just won't hold you strong and you will enjoy it. When you have a problem, you know you have a problem. You say, tell us something is this one. I'm always getting angry every time. Angry, angry, of course, spiritual husband, angry, angry. Father, deliver me from this anger. I'm always shouting, help me. I'm always shouting. I'm always shouting at my children. I'm always angry at my husband. I'm always this. I'm God knows, He sees it. But you're confessing it because you want, you know, you want a change in your life. But you cannot be doing one of God, one of God, and at home, you box your husband, you, you have my thighs, you get bitter. You abuse him, useless man. You curse him out. And you call me, use the same mouth and speak in tongues. And you say, everything is good. You are holy. Something is wrong with you. You are not okay. You need deliverance. You won't tell me you, you don't know that what you're doing is not normal. It's not normal. <laughs> it's not normal. The same with a woman. If you're born, your husband is a pastor or whatever. And he beats you up at home every time. Every smallest provocation, he punch you, punch you, punch you, beats you. After beating you, he'll come and preach and book it and speak in tongues and act like there's nothing wrong with him. Something is wrong with him. He needs deliverance. Something is wrong with him. 
So if you're nasty, you're nasty, man. No concept is that you don't know that you're nasty. Some people are very, very nasty, even in the body of Christ, acting on the spirit of witchcraft and stupidity. Bashing other people, making other people feel less of themselves, acting like their sister Holy Spirit, acting like now them are because past another person, now them they're more anointed than others. Check yourself, something is wrong with you. You need more immediate effect help. You need it. Because let me tell you something. Eh? God is not God is not an author of confusion. God is not a God that will bring somebody to you to preach as a topic. No, that is not God. Especially if it's your sister, just like let me say one of God win kids. I will come and preach about you because maybe I'm angry about something. I just come and, but I won't call your name, but I'll preach about you. God is not like that. No, God doesn't function like that. God is not a God of hate. God is not a God of, and that's why there's a saying that says, Thank God, man, no be God. Man is not God. Because if, if a man was God, if I don't kill everybody, because you cannot please man. You can't please man. Then I'll come and use the man of God wicked as a topic. And I'll say, the Holy Spirit said, be careful. Be careful. People have to be very careful. You see this word with God, that because you let your mind, your hateful mind, whisper things in your ear, you call Holy Spirit. Stop lying with his name because anytime you go and lie with his name and preach about somebody else, you're bringing a curse upon yourself and your generation. People have to be careful. When God is not saying anything, shut up. Keep quiet. Don't say God said don't say God said. See, by the special grace of God, God has ordained me as a prophetess. But I will never come online and please you and prophesy to you just because I want to be a prophet. Oh, my God, you they hear from God. Maggie, let me tell you, whether I prophesy to you now or not, I see they hear from God. <laughs> I tell you. You know, matter whether, see, my, pro my prophecy to you will not stop God from speaking to me. If I tell you God bless you, my dear, it's a prophecy. If you don't, if you don't say amen to it, means you don't like it. it. Means you don't like it. If I tell you God bless you, it's a prophecy. Amen, I receive it. Yes, God will bless. If I tell you favor upon your life, amen. I don't need to say, don't say the Lord. The God say amen. I don't need to add that drama. No, I don't need it. I can just say because, you know, I'm led to say. May favor follow you. May God be with you. Amen. And favor will follow you because you believe in the prayer. And when God speaks through my mouth, I give the message too. But I don't need to prove a point to please a man because I have the title of a prophet. Then I have to come deceive people and act stupid. No, I will not do that. Sorry, because you are not dragging me to hell. Nobody will drag me to hell. No. Mm -mm. So stop coming and making people your topic when you come to preach. The Bible is big. We have Genesis to Revelation. There's so much content to learn. If you're looking for something to preach, start from Genesis, they flip and they go. Reach the, the Revelation. You have something to preach. You will preach about something. God will give you work. But don't come and preach about somebody. Everybody is doing their work. God has called people differently. If you don't understand what somebody else is doing, don't go poking your nose and saying something as if God sent you as an assistant. To rebuke them. Let the rebuking come from the woman of God, our mother and the Lord. If there's something she needs to address, you know, go flog and she go tell you as it be. But don't come and do assistance with I hate such nastiness. That's nothing, and it, 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 it's, it's, it's like witchcraft. Sorry. It's like witchcraft. I know they, you know, you know, they talk about as it be. It's witchcraft. There's something I hate so much is when there's so much hate. You know, it's so bad because there's so much hate in the body of Christ. People come bashing people. We're supposed to be one in, 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 in the body of Christ. We're supposed to be one, united in love, correct in love. Don't correct in hate. If you don't understand what is going on in your other sister's life, just shut up and watch. You don't need to say anything. God will not use me and use you the same way. God will not use me and use you the same way. We're working for one father, but different assignments, different, different uh, topics. But don't come preaching about me. And I know you're preaching about me because you don't understand my assignment. Then you criticize my assignment because you don't like it. Uh -uh. It doesn't work like that. Just focus. Do what God has called you to do. Your focus should be, let me run this race and run it well and go to heaven. You're not here to mark presents 
You are not here to mark good for anybody. God is the one who will mark the good and the present. Run your race well. Leave other people alone. If anyone is coming from the ministry, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. If you are wise, you have ears here. Leave them alone. It's not your business. Stop poking in people's business. Stop talking what God did not say. Stop acting silly and nasty. It's wrong. I don't know why I had to address this. I said I was never going to talk about this, but I'm just, I don't know why I had to address it, but I believe if I address it, it's going to go off of my mind. And the person who, who whenever you come across this video, you know it's you. Stop poking in people's problems and acting like a sister's body spirit and judging them and saying things about them. You don't know how hard they work to do what God has told them to do. You now come and scatter. That's not why God brought you to this. Place. God did not call you uh, 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 someone who comes to scatter or to divide. Let them do their assignment. If you don't like it, close your eyes. Walk up us. Hallelujah. People should stop bashing people in the ministry. It's wrong. And that's why I said, you can't be friends with anybody, everybody anyway. That is the truth. Everybody cannot be your friend because some people will not understand you. They will not understand you. They will not understand you. They will not understand how you function. But God, who called you to do exactly what you're doing? The people who understand you. But don't come bashing somebody because you don't understand your assignment. And then other people are laughing at what you're saying. It's not funny. Sorry. It's not a comedy show. It's not funny. You're indirectly insulting God. You cannot understand everything. Whether they were led to do it or they were not led to do it, it's not in your place to say and say it as if you you know that they are not led to do it. No, it's not your business. It's not. Chase your ministry. Do what God has called you to do. Let them, let them handle their own ministry the way God has called them. If there's something that is not right, because we are better under one authority, and that's one of God apostles, but I believe we are under. So it doesn't matter if God has given all our children different ministries. But we know that the source, the grace, is coming from one place. If there's something that is not right in the ministry, she will know. She will know. She will call us and say, look, 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 you guys are not doing it. She will know. But don't let the devil laugh at us and say, look at this one. Look at this one. They're under such a great place and they're all fighting themselves and acting like you. Oh, they will not be laughing. You now give all these susu people authority to come and laugh too and say, look at them. They're all fighting themselves. Come on, use your sense. It's your sense. Now the funny thing happened to me with regards to myself. <clears throat> I was told not to push him out. But I was like, what? You know God is the one. I, I'm not able to see this comment again. Oh my God. So do you know God is the one? I tried to stop him, but I don't want him to fail. And I fail too because I'm worried about people. Shouldn't be worried about people. There's too much hate, too much hate, jealousy, envy, backbiting, gossip in the body of Christ. It's bad. If you don't know why God has called you to do a ministry, drop it, drop the call and go and be doing the back. Or if, oh, okay, since you like to talk, just go and be a, a, a newscaster or you work in the radio station because at least this person know they like to talk. So radio station, newscasting, all these things, you know you have the proper job for such thing. You can't be in in, 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 in in the body of Christ. And you know that we have one covering. I'm never talking about other people, you know. We have one covering. And we are fighting and throwing stones at each other for what? For stupid things that we don't understand. Why? It's really sad. It's really, really sad. And you know you, you know you, you know yourself. My prayer for you, my number one prayer for you, is to repent and go for deliverance. And you know, it's funny how people will say, how can you tell me to go for deliverance? No, 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 I'm not, see, and you can be very much anointed and you have other spirits that are functioning in you. Eh? <laughs> if you don't go for deliverance, because people also think I'm too big for deliverance. I'm like, yeah, everybody needs deliverance. <laughs> I can sing now and say, Father, I, I lied away. Hey, Father, have mercy on me. Father, deliver me from this spirit of life. Anybody can do, you know, it doesn't, you can be another and you, you, you see mess up and you need deliverance. So nobody's above deliverance. 
But when when you check yourself, you know that something is wrong with you. Please go for deliverance. Stop. Stop feeling you are above deliverance. Because if you're feeling you're above deliverance, trust me, you're going to crash. And you're not only going to crash. You will let that spirit suppress you and eat you so deep that it will now be hard for you to willingly go for deliverance. Because now the spirit of God has taken over you to say, oh, I need help. I'm too big. I'm too much. It's bad. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. It's bad. Stop it. Stop it. From the beginning, me, I'm somebody that I hate injustice. I hate nonsense. Let me put it like that. People that know me, they will tell you. Back in the world, I hate rubbish. I might not even know you, but I don't like nonsense. You can't be doing things as if you're in the world. You're not in the world anymore. You're in Christ Jesus. Act like people that have the Spirit of God inside them. Stop acting like, like uh, people that, you know, pe pe people that are still in the world. Stop acting like that. Talking about people, saying things about their ministry, saying who God, no call, who God call. Doing all this, you know, if you want to, call, and another thing I like is if you want to talk about somebody, please, the same boldness and the, the same Holy Spirit that led you to talk about what they are doing, let the same Holy Spirit lead you to call their names. If you really love them so much, you want to help them, and you feel that the Holy Spirit sent you to call their name, don't be a hypocrite. Stop preaching about people behind their back. And you make it sound like God sent you to say it and you cannot call them. Call their name so you know they know you're talking to them. If you pay you too much, go and meet them in their secret place and tell. <laughs> My husband says, that's very true. <laughs> God bless you, Pastor Raiko. <laughs> He's a pastor. My husband is coming to my platform. <laughs> God bless you, then. <laughs> you know, if you feel you love them too much and you don't like what they have done, go to their, that's why I say wisdom is important, go to their inbox and write them, sister, this thing that, that we saw you doing, you know, we just feel, we are not sure, but maybe you, you, we don't know, but you just feel it's not right. And maybe the person will explain to you why they did it. Maybe they'll say, God, let me to do it. Because when God led somebody to do something, you were not there. You, God did not speak to both of you. He spoke to that person, not to you. He did not call you as a sister to come and hear what he was saying to the person. Same thing as when God calls you to, tells you to do things. He doesn't call me to come and hear and say, okay, come and hear what I'm telling you to. No. No. People should stop acting Deputy Jesus and Deputy Assistant Holy Spirit. I, 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 and Deputy and Michael and all these things, trying to judge people, talking as if the, uh, 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 God has given them the sword to come and be cutting people's head off. It's wrong. Repent. You, you, repent. You, repent. It's a wrong spirit. Repent. Repent. And it's so sad because see, woman of God is working so hard, like I said, to raise us right. If she hears all these things, she'll be like, what is going on again? What is all this? What is all this? We just finished three days past in celebration. Are we not supposed to be celebrating each other? Are we not supposed to be, to, be, to, be, to be showing love to each other? Celebrate our mother who is working so hard for us to grow and be useful. And we want to be acting useless. Why? Can't you just let her, please, after this part, let her rest. Let her rest. This Christianity, at the time of man of God, this Christianity, I'm telling you, it's not, it's so deep. We cannot let her rest. And the worst part is, grown-up people, sometimes you hear this, you think you're, you're, you're serving nursery school, secondary school, five. But it's grown-up people, mature people, but no wisdom. No wisdom. Let her rest. But now again, headache. It's sad. I, I won't lie. This thing hurt my feelings. I won't lie. I'm not even trying to play. I'm not even trying to play holy now. He hurt. He hurt my feelings yesterday. He hurt, it, it's not. It didn't concern. It was not about me. But the person that it, it was about, 
I don't even talk to her. She's not even my friend, but it hurt my feelings. Because I'm like, people are busy doing God's work. People are busy doing, you don't know how hard they are working, sleepless night, bring it down, father, do fasting, doing all sorts. For God to, to help them build their ministry, build their life, and you're going to bash the person. And after bashing the person, what next? And you know people watch this person. How do you want people that watch her to look at her? Maybe people that are not yet strong in faith. What do people think? People, people don't understand that like, it's not everybody that is strong in the faith. There's some people that they are like the wind. Anywhere the wind blows, that's where they go. Meaning, when they hear something bad about a place where they are listening to the word of God, when they hear something that's not right, they will run. Because their faith is not yet solid. Their relationship with God is not yet solid. That person was supposed to be there to grow. But because of your lack of intelligence or lack of wisdom, you made that one now to run away. Because that one would think what you're saying is true. One person has, uh, uh, one soul has been lost because of that action that you took. Why bash somebody? If you don't understand what they're doing, just close your mouth. You don't, anyway, you don't have to understand everything. You are not Jesus. You are not God. But now that person has lost somebody or maybe a group of people because of your you think you're you, you think you're intelligent, you think you're smart by even saying those things. You want people to clap for you. Oh, they are so full of wisdom. Oh, wisdom talking here. And you think you're making sense, but you're making yourself look really stupid. Sorry to say. Grown-ups. Somebody minding her business, doing her assignment in peace. You go bashing the person. May God help you and deliver you in the name of Jesus. And, and, and stop it. The Bible is so They gave us six months to read the Bible. I never reached half self myself. If you're looking for a topic to, 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 to talk about, the Bible is so big. Read the Bible. Come and see Vindication. Come and read Vindication book. Be, do something. There's so much to preach. The word of God is so deep. There's so much to preach. You see this Bible, there are many things that I, I myself don't even understand yet. God has to be revealing things to me. There's some Bible, you know, passage that when you read, you yourself, you don't even understand. And you're like, Father, give me understanding to, to this, to, 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 to this Bible passage. It's deep. <laughs> to spend that time and be asking for wisdom to understand the Bible and preach the word of God for people to come and know you're talking about another person that, that is doing her assignment that God has sent her to do her assignment and you're feeling funky you're feeling you're feeling like you are you are too anointed you are too proud you're too this be careful it's wrong it's wrong very wrong God bless everyone I think I still have one more Bible scripture I need to read. Um, if you have a Bible, open your Bible to the book of Psalm 119, verse 9. Psalm 119, verse 9. I think that was the, that's my last uh, Bible scripture. Uh, we were reading Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We read Jeremiah 1, 7, and now Psalm 119, verse 9. And Psalm 119, verse 9 says, Psalm 119, verse 9 says, how can a young person stay pure by obey? How can a young person stay pure? Then there's a question mark. It says by obeying your word, meaning by keeping the commandment of God, by you know staying holy. How do you how how can a young person? You know, like I said, I was speaking. I said young people. You know, you have youthful exuberance. You're young. You want to see the world. You want to do all sorts of things. You want to have fun. You want to do things. You don't have time for your creator, you don't have time for God, you know, because I was also there, you know. So how can you stay pure as a young person by obeying the word of God? Because the word of God guides you. The spirit of God guides you. There are things you want to do. Your flesh wants to do. Your spirit will tell you no. Mm -mm. The spirit of God will tell you no. Don't go this way. Don't go this way. Stop. Conscience. Because once you start digesting the word of God in your system, your conscience becomes very sensitive. Your conscience is important to you because your conscience, because Jesus becomes your conscience. There are things you see and be like, no, I won't do it. Because your conscience will judge you. 
your conscience will judge you. You won't want to do that. You know, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. But if you don't have Jesus, you're not reading the word of God. And even sometimes you might be a believer, you're not reading the Bible. You're not like, because the Bible is what makes you grow. It's what gives you faith. It's what, you know, it's what gives you hope. If you're not reading it, you still find yourself doing a lot of things that you're not supposed to be doing because you're not deep in it. You're not, you're not having a, a, a relationship. Like the, the, the Bible gives you the opportunity to know God, to understand him. To understand his, his, his word, to understand how things work when you become born again. Hallelujah. But if you're not reading it, you don't understand it when you are when you are hopeless, you don't know what to do. But because me, I read it when I feel hopeless, when I feel down, I go and look for scriptures that will cheer me up. I'll read it, I will speak it into my life, I will pray, I will speak in tongues, I might cry. And after a while, I feel good because I, I have eaten the word. But if I'm not reading the word, I won't know what to do. I'll maybe be crying in my room or be calling people for prayers everywhere, you know, just feeling hopeless, just feeling one kind. Hallelujah. The Bible is roadmap to God's heart for me. That's right. That's right. You need it. You need it every day. You need it. Even if it's one verse, read. Just make it a habit that you read, you read the word of God. It's important. Make it a habit that you read the word of God. It will help you grow. Don't sit on your on your on your assignment. Don't sit on your calling. Don't let anybody tell you you cannot do it. Don't let anybody tell you that God cannot use you. Now lie. Once you repent, you live um, holy and right. God can use you because you are ready. Don't let anybody bash and tell you, no, you're not doing that. You're not anointed. God cannot use somebody like you. You are such a liar. You are such a gift. You are such a liar. See, God even like the liar and the thief. And those are the ones God likes to use. Yeah? Don't let anybody bring you down and tell you that God cannot speak through you. God speaks to everybody. Do you understand? There's nothing like special guests that God speaks to and people that, that, that need permission before God. God speaks to all of you here. All of you. You just have to pay attention and know when he's speaking. All of you. There's nothing like God loves me more than you. Now, like God loves us equally. He's not a partial God. Equally. That's how God is. So they're not like, oh, God loves the man of God in the morning. All of them, Allah, God loves all of us the same way. God speaks to all of us. All of us, God speaks to all of us. You are useful. God will use you. So when God tells you, go and do that thing I've told you to do, stop waiting for somebody that will tell you, no, you cannot do it, no, you cannot be like, if they laugh at you, that's their problem. Just do what God has told you to do. Even if it's 10 minutes, do it. Because the more you do your assignment, the more God, God gives you more assignment. But if you're not doing the ones that he has given you, he's not going to give you another one. Because he wants you to finish the one he already gave you before he gives you a new one, right? <laughs> so don't let, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And don't let anybody bash you. If you're ministry here, I applaud you. You're doing a great job. It's not easy. It's not easy. If you are here, you are doing ministry. I applaud you. I salute you. It's not easy. More grace, more fire, more anointing, more strength. In the name of Jesus. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't, don't let anybody tell you you're not good enough. Don't let anybody tell you you're not anointed enough. Don't let anybody tell you that you, that you cannot do big things. You can do it. Once you're available, you say yes to the Lord. That's what's important. You have said yes, you are obedient to his word, you are living right to please him, that's it. When they come bashing you, just put them, put them on it, on it now. There's no need. And the worst part is most time when people talk about you in the ministry, who are in the ministry and they are talking about you, it just shows that they are doing big things. It just shows that you are the bigger person. It just shows that they are they are jealous of what you carry. It just shows that you are a big girl, man. <laughs> the reverse. That is the truth. If I come for you so hard like that means I'm jealous of you. <laughs> There's something about you that is so special that I don't have. Hallelujah. So when people come for you like that, my dear, don't even, don't even, don't even pay attention because, girl, 
You're doing some big things, man. Girl, God, they use you, man. Girl, they want your gift. Just come, tell us, please, come on. We go, I pray, Father, I give them my gift. It is my gift that is making them so angry. I mean, come on, they go. Come on, give they go. Go use that. So much hate in the body of Christ. Come. No, really, do you know him? The truth is, if you're not strong, then that's why you see some people backslide. Some people backslide because of people's mouths in the body of Christ. That's why it only takes somebody that is strong in Christ to overlook some things that happen in the body of Christ. Because you now you feel you're strong, somebody else is not strong. When they hear one thing, bim, they run. Jesus, so this was up in this ministry. They don't verify, they don't ask God if it's true confirmation because they themselves don't even know how to ask God for confirmation. They will just run. <laughs> they will just run. Thank you. Since when is our ministry or we are called to bash each other? So, shaking my head, it's sad. It's sad. You make somebody that is coming to know God run away because of your mouth. Somebody that is trying to build her ministry, mind her business, you go and bash her. And maybe people that used to watch her that came to watch you know you're talking about her. And then those ones that will not be using one kind of eyes. But you know how it is. You might be looking at that one kind of eye like, mm, mm, now wow. You know how this thing is. And tomorrow you come and speak in tongues. And tomorrow you come and fast. Tomorrow you come and pray for people. And you think that God is happy with you, really? After spoiling somebody's own, you expect your own to grow. You are playing. Whatever a man sows, that is what he will reap. If you sow wickedness, you will reap wickedness. This the Bible talk up. What you sow is what you will reap. So sometimes when you are being wicked to somebody or when you are being stupid to somebody, always remember that the Bible will not. You see, God cannot contradict His word. Anything with Bible talk, now they happen. If you sow wickedness, you reap it. If you sow good, you reap it. It's life. Except you apologize and you repent and you go for deliverance. That is what will happen. Somebody or a group of people too will come and use you as topic too. And the one they will say about you, you will not like it. It will pain you. You know, sometimes it's good for people to taste the same medicine they give to others. That medicine, is it sweet or bitter? You taste your own pill, you know whether it's nice. Sometimes it's also good for people to experience these things too, so they know how ah, man, what we did to that person was not good. You can nail that and something. And saying it with so much confidence as if God sent you before. Me, I will say it and I say, you're not because send on that. Anytime, any day I will say it. If you know that I'm talking to you, you know I will say it any day. Use me and go and preach in your platform. But I will say it. It wasn't God. Sorry. God doesn't work. God will not let you bash somebody. That is not the God that I know. Mommy did not raise us like that. Even mommy will not come and bash somebody on her platform. If there's something, she will call you up and, you know, talk with you. <laughs> so, my dear, if I become the topic in your platform, good means there's something about me that you don't, you don't have, baby. <laughs> you don't concern me. Like I said, Bible plenty, Genesis and Revelation, you will have something to preach. <laughs> Leave people alone first. When they do false prophets time, why don't you take the opportunity to bash false prophets? Well, we look at you, you are doing the you should, you are doing the right course for Christ now. You are bashing false prophets because they are doing the wrong things. But your own sister in Christ, the same ministry with you, the same covering we have. We have the gods to come and preach about them. And you say, God say, God, God said. You should be careful with this God said it. God said it's very sensitive, but please be careful with this God said. <laughs> because this God said has put some people in problem. Or God said, God said, if you're not sure if it's your flesh, you just say, I feel, I feel like something is wrong. This is your feeling because you don't understand it. You don't understand it, but you cannot say God said. It's just that when God speaks to some people's mouth, some people still don't believe because they don't understand it. But you will not come and say, it's not God that spoke. No, because you don't understand it doesn't mean you have to say something bad about it. 
I don't understand it. Okay, I shut up because I don't understand it. People have to be careful. It's crazy. It's crazy. My prayer, me, to be honest, I'm not saying it out of hate or out of out of anger or whatever. I'm really saying it from a place of love. Stop doing it. Repent. Go for deliverance. Apologize. It's important. Apologize. Because you did a damage and that's bad. Apologize to the person or to the people. And focus on your assignment and your job. See, and this work is plenty. There's so much work to do for God. So much. See, this much more work that we are even doing now. We are still complaining. Hey, Father, this thing is too much. Oh, oh God, this thing, this thing is too much. Oh, this work is too much. And it's a small job. But you want to be in stadium. You want God to take you to nations and countries. But the small one we are doing, we are still complaining. <laughs> focus first on the small ones and mind your business and try to build this relationship with God and build it right before he will start taking it to the nations and every other place you want to go and be doing big things. But you can't be doing big things like this when you're just starting small and already bashing other people and you want to do big things. How? 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 It's crazy. People have to stop this. It's bad. Very bad. Stop it. God bless you. How many of you have been blessed? Yes, God is mighty. How many of you have been blessed? Thank you, Jesus. You are mighty. Oh. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I said my network. <laughs> Uh, Prophet Obina said, you will come out and see God said and told you, and we will believe you. But when somebody else said God said to you, you will fight that person. Not only you, they hear one. <laughs> oh, tell them, tell them, now only they hear from God. Any other person that they hear from God, I better be tell them, oh, pastor. <laughs> Hey, God bless you, brother. There's a root. God bless you. God bless you, woman of God. Nicola, God bless you, woman of God. Javiri, God bless you. Shanila, woman of God. God bless all the women of God. Yeah, all of you here are women of God. Let me tell you something. All of you here are women and men of God. Huh? The only difference is maybe you have not said anything. Well, God, God, you see, you came, you came to this world for a purpose, to spread that good news. So you're all women and men of God. And I salute all of you in the name of Jesus. More grace to you all. Even the ones who are toiling for, 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 for hours, just paying in tongues, God bless all of them. I know it's it. God bless you, Ines. God bless you, Victoria Maka, woman of God. God bless you, woman of God, Naomi. Um, God bless you, woman of God, Winke. God bless you, uh, woman of God, Elion. God bless you, Laura, woman of God. God bless you, woman of God, Vera. God bless you, woman of God, Tandy, woman of God, Madina. Like all of you are powerful, anointed women and men of God. Do not let anybody tell you otherwise. You know, no? <laughs> don't let anybody tell you, say, God no fit talk through you. God no fit use you. Ta, I'm going to go sit down. <laughs> I'm going to go sit, sit one corner, Jare. Don't let anybody intimidate. Intimidation is not of God. Don't let anybody intimidate. See this work with God, eh? Stand giving. Be sure if you have not asked for boldness, receive boldness in the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody will come and intimidate you. Whether I'm doing show, devil, or even in Christ Jesus, nobody. Don't let anybody intimidate you. Intimidation is not of the Lord. Now you go intimidate Satan. So if somebody wants to come and intimidate you and say they are God, no, they are with the wrong spirit. No, no, no. You are supposed to intimidate the devil and his agents, not human beings, where they do God work. So if somebody that says they are in Christ, I want to come and be intimidating you. Check them. Something is wrong with them. Something is wrong with them. Don't be intimidated. Do what God has called you. And for you that have assignment, I beg. I think God beg on you. 
Go and do your assignment, though, please. If you know that God has given you an assignment to do, please go and do it. Stop sitting on your assignment. Not be cheer. Hmm? Your assignment, not be cheer. Go and do it. Stop sitting on your assignment and waiting for 100 confirmation, 1 billion confirmation, 1 million confirmation before you go and do it. Go and do your assignment. There are souls attached to you, waiting to hear you also preach and say, Oh, woman of God, God bless you, we are blessed. Go and do your assignment. Stop waiting and wasting time. Hallelujah. There's intimidation come from a place of low self. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> One of God we can say, I'm going out. <laughs> One of God we can you have an assignment that you have not done, really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so some men don't be cheer when they sit on top of them. They give you some men, you go put up on your and sit on top of them. Why you go sit on top of them? You think you go boil on your and stand up. Go and do the assignment that God said you do. <laughs> People are waiting to be blessed. You have friends on Facebook that are waiting to be blessed. Maybe the day you do your assignment is the day you're going to bless somebody that has been waiting for that particular assignment. I beg, eh? stand up from that assignment and go and do your assignment. <laughs> He said, yes, a professional time. <laughs> really? <laughs> what of God, why now? <laughs> Are you quick, 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 God, do your assignment. <laughs> God, get the message, hold, hold, hold. People should go and do what he has called them to do. It's not when your bones are weak and tired before you, you start doing gospel. Now that you're young, you are strong, you're still active. Go and do God's work. Whatever God has given you to do, do it. Don't compete with anybody. Don't say somebody is coming for seven hours, eight hours. If you don't do it, God do not. God has not acknowledged you. Not lie. If God tells you go and do for ten minutes, twenty minutes, that your twenty minutes can cover for the same price. The person who went for nine hours will receive or eight hours. So just do. The most important thing is obedience. Obey when God tells you something. Obey Him. Go and do it. And leave whatever that is remaining. Now you, God will handle them. Just go and do it. Don't compare yourself to anybody. Don't compete with anybody. Don't feel uh, underrated. Don't feel intimidated. Don't feel any kind. You are powerful. You are beautiful. You are loved by God. You will be used powerfully, mightily. People will come to know Jesus through you. People will see the love of God through you. People will see Jesus when they see you. People will see the joy that comes, the peace that comes from above when they see you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So all I could do, I'm trying my best. I do one deliverance and take one week break. <laughs> Jenna said, he does one deliverance and goes on one week break. <laughs> There's no break over. <laughs> There's no break, man. Well, it depends. If they're not coming, then it's different. But if they're coming, you have to do your work. <laughs> Today, I finished my assignment. God gave me, and I feel so good. You see? Thank you. You see? God bless you, man of God, Nicola. God bless you. God bless everyone. Um, If you are here, and you would love to give your life to Christ, you want to know my friend, Jesus. You want to know the same Jesus that is still changing this, uh, this woman here way before, before. Her brain, they thought small, small. <laughs> Jesus, I beg, chop kiss. <laughs> you too much. <laughs> Every time I like to give him a kiss because, man, Jesus, uh, he walk on me oh, and he's still walking on me. He goes, man, no. Can't, 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 can't. God is good. God is good anytime, you know. If you know you want to know this, my best friend, this, my, this, my father, Jesus, you want to have a relationship with him. You want to come to know him? You want to give him a chance? You want to just know who is this man? Who is this person that people talk about? Who is this 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 person that people you know talk about? You would like to give your life to Christ? You would like him to come into your heart? <clears throat> I'd like you to put your hand on your chest and you say this prayer after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I come into your presence as a sinner. Please forgive me. I didn't know any better. I know that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross of Calvary so that my sins may be wiped away. I accept you, Jesus. Come into my life. Accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know you said this prayer, heaven is pleased with you. 
May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So know that you said this prayer. Get yourself a Bible, please. It's important you get yourself a Bible or you can download the Bible app, different translations on your phone. Read what you can understand. Please don't go and read this. Thou goest, thou comest, thou knowest, thou doest. Me, self, I know they understand them. King James Version. <laughs> <laughs> I don't read it because I don't understand it myself. <laughs> I'm very simple version because <laughs> I'm going to scatter your brain and say you want to read Bible. <laughs> you can read it in your language as well if you want to do. Uh, if you don't have a Bible believing church, feel free to worship with us in Jesus with the answer ministries. This is my ministry. Feel free to worship with us here. Or please feel free. To go to Princess Benemzi Ministries, that's my mother and the Lord, that's our ministry, our, where I'm going and, you know, where I grew and I'm still growing. It's called Princess Benemzi Ministries. Look, look it up on Facebook, follow. Your life can never and will never be the same. All you check woman of God, her name is um, Belema Abili on Facebook. When you see her, click like. Whenever she's, she's on, you get a notification and you can join us. You will definitely love God. You will, when I say definitely, it's a must, except you don't know why you, 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 why you're there. If you want to know about God, you want to love God, you want to grow in Christ, that's the right place to be. Hallelujah. God bless everyone. See, ampli amplified version is very easy. Okay, I've never, I, I've never read amplified, so I don't know. You see, we leave it for one of God of Yes, yeah, so <laughs> one of God of likes the King, King James version. <laughs> he likes the King James version. I don't know. I don't know how you understand it. It's, Sometimes I understand, but most time when you're reading like the deep words, I'm like, no, nah, mm -mm, this is not for me. <laughs> I like my NLT translation. I like my easy translation. I like my, my good news translation. Those ones, I like them, but man, KJV, nah, that's not for me. <laughs> it's good to be honest, you know, so I won't come and be reading. That will go west in thy zone, and then I'll be biting my tongue. Mr. No, that's something I won't preach. No, 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 the devil is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so what I'm going to, yeah, it's true. This is this is this is special grace to understand King James. I'm telling you that special grace. Eh? What well, I'm going to open now. This is what I tap. <laughs> I tap into this grace eh, because you know, say I like King James. Oh, really? Wow. Ah, now we like King James. Congratulations. <laughs> you see, I tell you, I don't understand King James. You see, many people don't understand King James. I personally do not understand it, so I'm not gonna. I'm not going to preach reading King James to prove a point. No, I'm just going to read NLT, easy translation, good news. You know, sometimes NIV I read, but not very frequently. But man, all those King James, New King James, because for me, New King James is almost like King James. I'm not, I'm, thank you. <laughs> thank God they brought different translations. Because those days that they just had that KJV. Maybe that's why I did not have a relationship with God. I did not like, I did not even love God because. For the rich King James Bible, we are not even about today, sir. <laughs> um, God bless you, man of God. Um, but yes, sir. she said, I like King James too. Oh, wow. Um, one of God bless you, the apostle prayed for me. I said, Read King James, you understand it. And that, wow, hmm. I said, I just said, it is a special grace because, man, I think, well, I think it's also about. When you try to start reading it and you ask for the wisdom or the grace to understand it, you would understand. So I think just because I'm already running away from it, I'm not really putting F as in when I open my Bible, it's NLT straight or other translation. That's why maybe the understanding is not coming, you know. But maybe by the time I like now, I, I already tapped, you know. And if I start reading, reading it in KJV, maybe then the understanding will come. But the truth is, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not, I'm not ready to scatter my brain. <laughs> I don't want to scatter my head because of uh, because of KJB at the end. Look at the little small one. What has happened? <laughs> oh my God! Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Father. God is good. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. Thank you, Lord. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. I love all of you with the love of God. I have to go. Um, next time when I come, next time when I come, hopefully, I don't know, I might come tomorrow. I might come, might. So they might then. <laughs> might. If, if I would come tomorrow, what time would you guys like me to come? Should I come the same time I came today? Or should I come earlier? What is preferable for you guys? I want to know who will be here if I come. Would you would you like the time this time that I usually come like around like today I came by I think past six past six p.m. my time in Switzerland. So yes, yeah, okay, woman of God, so yes, yeah, same time. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. It was a pleasure listening to you. So much to learn. So much to learn. God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. Same time as today is good. Okay, good. So that means past six my time. Same time. <laughs> my husband is there. there. <laughs> oh my God. My husband is the first time. Pastor Riker, we salute you. I beg you to share me salute my husband. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that he's here. He he usually he usually always busy. He usually doesn't like watch, but I'm shocked to see him on my platform comment. <laughs> It's a bag of it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is so funny, really, because <laughs> we salute you, Pastor Raiko. God bless you, sir. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even know he was still watching. Yeah, I thought he had gone, but I've just seen someone. Like, ah, he's still coming. <laughs> Oh my God! God bless you. God bless you, baby. <laughs> so, so he says the same time. So same time we'll be back <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> uh, thank you all of you for 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 saluting him for me. Gently thank you for you know he makes this ministry work very easy for me. You know it's not easy for a man to to handle all the kids while you have to come and. You know, do God's work, but he, he makes it really easy once I just tell him ahead of time. He just says, Oh, it's fine, you go and take care of the kids, you know. So, God bless you, sir. I know it's easy, but you be, you be correct, guy, you be correct, man, the top person. <laughs> he makes ministry easy for me, so yeah, and he makes motherhood easy for me, too. So, God bless you, sir. God bless you. <laughs> Ruth, Ruth, I love it, but yes, so you know that you were there that day when I called. <laughs> You were laughing, you were laughing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Shanila. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, one of our weekend. Pastor, thank you. The kids will be sleeping tomorrow by the time it does. <laughs> no, no one is, 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 is uh, six. So I can't pass six today. So pass six, they will not be sleeping. Their eyes still they shine. <laughs> They sleep a little bit late, so they won't, they won't sleep by six. <laughs> yeah, my husband is saying thank you to all of you. So, yeah, he's saying thank you. <laughs> wow, he said, wow, God bless you, sir, for making it. Yeah, um, honestly, it's not easy. When you have somebody who is helping you, you know, when somebody is supportive, as God, like I'm not born of your bona be two have become one now, born of your both, flesh of your flesh, now me be a nine. If the person is supportive, it makes it easy for you. But if you don't get any support, I'm not, my frustration now. So that's why nobody's, you're not, you're not blowing the, I'm not blowing any horn. But man, if something is good, talk up. Don't hide it and say, oh, no, I don't want. To. No. When somebody is helping you, it's good to appreciate them. Or when somebody is good, you appreciate them. God bless you, man of God, Dan. Dan, you run away. Eh? You, you just come, come, you run, come, you run. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man of God. I go up in now. Very soon, don't worry, very soon I will show for that in Australia. Mm? Me safe, I'm coming to Australia. I want to see all of you. <laughs> God bless you, man of God. Please, God. God bless you, man. God bless you, prophetess. I can leave now that you have completed the video. Yes, God bless you, man of God, Claudia. Yeah, I have completed my video. I'm going to go now. God bless you all. By the grace of God, tomorrow, same time, past six, I'm going to be online. And I'll have the opportunity to pray for people, people who need prayer for healing, whatever. I'll, I'll call you up and then we're going to pray. 
and we're going to see what God is going to do. God bless all of you. Thank you all for... Is it you will carry me your bag? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not carrying my I will buy you plant tickets. Ah, I will carry my routine for bag. No, 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 no. I'll buy you a plant. You're sitting short, sitting right next to me. <laughs> Ruth, can you imagine you carry a bag? Go Australia. Go for, go for over and go program for Australia. Man, it got too good though. <laughs> God bless all of you. I love you. God bless you, Laura. God bless you. Laura, no, Laura, God bless you. It's not easy. You that you are back home, you still make time to be here. God bless you, really. God bless you. He said, I was still leave for work. So, ah, okay. May God, may God bless you at work. May God favor you at work, at work in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless everyone. See you tomorrow by past six. I love you with the love of God. And I pray for all of you today in the name of Jesus. May God protect you. May God guide you. May God favor you in the name of Jesus. I speak upon your life that no weapon from the case to shall prosper. Every evil dream, I cancel them in the mighty name of Jesus. Every arrow from the pit of hell will break, will destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus. As you go out, you're going out and you're coming in. is blessed in the name of Jesus. As you go to bed, may the angels surround your house. May the power of the Holy Ghost protect your body, spirit, and soul. Every organ in the name of Jesus you will sleep like a newborn baby you will wake up in good health in Jesus name amen I love you all see you tomorrow by the special grace of God if I'm not coming I'll may I'll tell you guys but hopefully I will be there tomorrow God bless you love you all bye